Internet. Internet. <laughs> what week is it, Internet? It's E3 week. That's right. It's episode number 43 of the Power Hour. I'm your host, Mr. Wes Gardner. Over there. With the Mr. Minecraft webcam. With the <laughs> with the with the eight bit retro. <laughs> we got Marco Flores. What's going um, on, guys? What's up, brother? I don't know. Yeah, uh, it's it's been it's been a, a entire not tiring. Yeah, like, I guess it's tiring week. It's been we a, have to get up in the morning every time and yeah, listen to people talk. Right, and I mean, you're a trooper because you're you've been keeping up with E3 while working midnight shifts, while trying to get sleep sometime, while sometime. trying like. I try. It's I crazy, try. man. It's I don't crazy. know. Um, but yeah, E3 is this week, of course. It's taken over Twitch. It's taken over the internet. Um, what Marco and I are going to do this episode, this will probably go longer than an hour. I'm just going to warn you guys. It'll be a closer to a two-hour long power hour. Um, we're going to be taking your questions. We're also going to be covering every press conference, then talk about some games that we're looking at, um, things like that. So yeah, now Marco's official uh, 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 Twitch celebrity. Got his face on webcam. Yes. Yes, my sir. So cam. we got that right there. Um, our older questions from Twitter. Yes, we're going to be taking the questions from Twitter. If you guys have stuff you want to ask now, but we will be going in chronological order based <clears throat> on the conferences. Um, and what that means is up first. What is up, up first? Bethesda. Was it Nintendo World Championships? <laughs> yeah, we can talk about them, man. They're, they're crazy. <laughs> like Mario Maker. Yeah. We're going to talk about this more in the Nintendo thing. But Mario Maker might we might have to just retire video games. Cause like <laughs> where do you go from there? I don't like, know. That's that's the ultimate video game. Pretty 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 much. I mean the concept I like the concept they have. Yeah. Uh you know, you, you it goes back to like the wizard movie where, you know, all these kids or whatever were just playing video games and then all of a sudden they go to this tournament. They do game reveals while in the tournament. Yeah. Um I I, I kinda like that. You know, because it gives the players like, oh, I never played this game at all. So right. might as well figure it out right then and there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I like the concept of what they have going. I just wonder like where the regional tournaments are because I didn't hear anything about these guys like, yeah. getting into the, the main the main. Right, like where did this happen? Did this happen at like a Best Buy in Wisconsin? Like what happened? Like where did they hold them? How did they get in? Right. We, we didn't know a lot of that. But where did, where did, where did you know... The one in Texas hit, like happened. Like, what, did it happen at a a Seven Eleven or <laughs> right? Like no. the Ramada Inn. Like, yeah, where does exactly. this thing happen? <laughs> um, oh man. But but it kind of reminds me. And it's funny you brought that up because it reminds me of the Street Fighter stuff, especially during uh, um, a, a, like the huge tournaments, uh, the stuff in Vegas, um, where they'll do exhibition fights. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, you guys want to see Street Fighter Five be played by Justin Wong and whatever? And like, here you go. And like yeah. then they get in and they have no idea what the hell this game does, but somehow they're still amazing at it. Like, right, exactly. I, <laughs> like yeah. they've never played it before, but they're <laughs> automatically genius. Um, but but yeah, Nintendo World Championships. How long has it been? Like fifteen years since they've done that. It's when been was, a long ten years was the at last least. One? I, I don't. I only knew of the one that happened in the movie, and then I didn't really hear anything about. Well, we didn't have internet either, but yeah, I mean, it was like fifteen years ago. Okay. Okay. So, kind of a big deal that they brought that back. I, I and I like the fact, and once again, we'll talk to, about this in Nintendo. I like the fact that that was their live event, right? And then they pre-filmed their E3 press junket. Yeah, I think yeah, that's, that's true. You know, you know, like Nintendo Direct, like usual formula. Yeah, and I think yeah. that's better for Nintendo. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but like I said, we'll talk about that in Nintendo. But uh, yeah, so Nintendo World Championships, kind of a cool way to kick off. Um, something different from Nintendo. Get people out there. Get people hyped about the game. Mario Maker does look ridiculously good. Like, that's <laughs> almost a system seller. Like, yeah. uh, hell, Brittany and I were talking about it. Like, would we really play a Wii U? Like, we, we started having the discussion based on the game. Mm -hmm. So that's a testament by itself. Um, yeah. But yeah, overall, thought Nintendo World Championship. Um, I didn't catch a lot of it. I catch about an hour of it. I would say. Yeah, I caught um, here and there, but I was able to see like I guess the end of like I, the very last round or match. Yeah. But um, you know, with Mario Maker. Oh no, no, or was it Metroid? It was. It was somewhere around there. But I was I was jumping in and out. Yeah. But uh, I, I just like the fact that whatever games they revealed there, it was under like different names, so you didn't you know you didn't get the announcement right there. But they wanted right. to just you know showcase the game. Like like the wizard in the movie, 
And, um, you know, like, yeah, you never played this before. You know, give it a go. So, yeah. Yeah, it's it, it's so crazy. Speaking of, like, I, I just learned this uh, yesterday. In China, it was illegal to sell Diablo 3. <laughs> so they sold it under the code name Big Pineapple. Big Pineapple? <laughs> okay. So, like, they'd all be right. like, hey, Big Pineapple here. Come get your Big Pineapple. And then <laughs> all the kids on the Marvel street would know, let's get, our, let's get our Diablo on. <laughs> um, yeah. But, yeah, like... Cool way to kick it off. Cool way to kind of kick off the proceedings, get people kind yeah. of hyped up and stuff. Um, and then Bethesda. So <laughs> Bethesda, this was their very first year ever doing a press junket. Mm-hmm. Like they're, they're now a bigger publisher than they used to be. So now they're publishing more stuff from different from Arcane Studios, you know, from uh, you know Zenimax and right. uh, just all these different places are working mm-hmm. under Bethesda now. So they're kind of going the route of Activision Blizzard. Right, mm-hmm. like Blizzard kind of does Blizzard stuff, but then Activision publishes out other company stuff. Right. Um, so Bethesda comes out. First thing they show is Doom. Yeah. Now they, they revealed do. Doom last year at QuakeCon in Dallas, and I was bummed because I was I'm like 30 minutes from Dallas, and they were like, "Oh, we showed Doom," and I was like, "Shit," because <laughs> I I wanted to see it. Right. right. I wanted to see kind of how did they evolve that idea, um, and they showed it. And it runs extremely fast. It mm-hmm. runs pretty fluid. The first part of the demo, though, I felt wasn't actual gameplay. It okay. felt too smooth. I've never seen anyone that smoothly control a reticle oh, in a first-person yeah. shooter. Yeah, that's true. You know what I mean? Like, it looked floaty. The second time, when they were out in the canyon area, that looked legit because the person, their mouse was freaking out. So right. I was like, okay, that's gameplay. Like, <laughs> you know, if <laughs> right. Doom is really that fast, there's no way that you could perfectly, like, crane dolly shot. Like, smooth. It can't right. happen. Yeah. Even with a thumbstick and a controller, and you train for 20 hours to do it. Like, right. you're going to mess up somewhere over the course of a five-minute demo. And it was just always way too perfect. So mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, maybe this is in-engine, but maybe we're not actually seeing gameplay here. Um... But later they showed some of the multiplayer stuff. I kind of got a Halo vibe. Um, and I, I did, I did, I did too. I mean, yeah. it was for me personally. It was, it was kind of, bi- it was kind of like a general shooter, in a sense. Yeah. And like the only thing I noticed was, uh, other than the make a map thing, was, um, I guess if you shoot, if you shoot the enemies enough, they get to like a stagger mode, mm. and then you can come up and do like you know the one hit kill, like animation of whatever weapon you have. Um, but like other than that, like you know, other than the nostalgic guns that they had, um, you know, the enemies possibly, um, yeah, everything seemed very general. Not nothing really sticking out. Yeah, you know? nothing that really caught the attention. Like the one thing that did catch my attention is that Doom, uh, the Doom snap map. Right. And, yeah. and the reason why is it reminded me of Time Splitters. Mm-hmm. And because Time Splitters on Xbox um, original and uh, like in a PS uh, PS2. Those games were so cool because you could make your own maps using the grid layout system. Like here's the four corner and then, or here's the cross where four doors and then here's a T-bone intersection and then here's a curve and then I'm gonna put stairs in this and then I'm gonna, so it looked exactly the same way. You got a grid paper and then you could like construct, go in, play multiplayer death matches, play single player stuff. Um, the single player stuff was harder because you actually had to add the AI. Mm-hmm. Um, but you could just drop a jar. I want a monkey with a shotgun right here. Right. You could like put it. But it was easy. Um, of course, with those systems, the RAM wasn't, you know, you couldn't make huge sprawling things like Vistas like they did in the actual game in the campaign. Yeah, yeah. But now, since people are having like 16 gigs of RAM, you know, <laughs> I, I'm curious as to how, you know, how, at least on the PC version, how robust is that? thing gonna work and also because they have the doom engine they have right. their i want to say build engine but they called it something different that's back in like the Duke nukem 3d days mm-hmm. um but they basically have a build engine like the new doom engine and i wonder if they're gonna give pc that stuff and console the doom snap map or if everybody is now locked into doom snap map yeah that's 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 interesting to think about because yeah, that, it's all about it seemed like, it seemed like pc will get the the snap map yeah, because I, yeah, I don't know how they're going to lock it in. Mm-hmm. Um, but that might be the way that consoles can share stuff with each other. Yeah. But then PC has its own deal. Unless, unless the console has like a smaller version of a snap map. You know, like not as like, Not as robust. That's a good point. That's a good yeah. point. Uh, but yeah, so, so Doom. Looked like Doom. Um, yeah. I can't ask for anything more than that, really. 
<laughs> you know, I mean, because if they announce a Quake, I know what expectations I would have of Quake. Mm -hmm. And if it didn't fit that, I'd be kind of bummed. Or if they tried to, like, re you could now buy weapons. I'd be like, what are you doing? Um, but, you know, so Doom is Doom. That's mm -hmm. fine. I'm expecting jump scares. I'm expecting the double barrel shotgun. Whenever I saw that, um, I was like, okay, they put in the, the boomstick. So yeah. we're, we're good to go. That, that, was, um, that was actually a thing, too. Like, I didn't see any jump scares. It was just straight up gameplay. I was waiting for it. The whole freaking conference, yeah. I was like, they're going to do, they're going to end it on the jump scare. And they yeah. never did. Yeah. Kind of weird. Um, but then after that, they showed Battle Cry. Um, they announced a worldwide beta. Um, it was kind of that Team Fortress 2 looking game. That's, that's what I was thinking right off the bat. It was very Team Fortress 2. And it looked really stilted. That's what I put on my notes here. Like, it yeah. just looked very robotic. Very... Mm -hmm. Not to say it won't be a fun game, but I mean, you got some competition. You got, like, I guess yeah, you, you could put... Team Fortress 2. <laughs> yeah, you won Team Fortress 2. Blizzard's Overwatch is coming out. Oh, right, right. Um, there's, there's a game that, that the PC was talking about called uh, Dirty Bomb. That's yes, that's... Of... Yeah, that's by the Brink people. Yeah. So, that's already out. Or it's out on, like, Open Alpha or something. Yeah. But Battle Cry's got a lot of competition. The thing they showed looked stilted. They did do the worldwide beta. Um, but you, that's the type of thing that you probably have to go hands-on. Mm -hmm. See if it's really gonna... You know, that if it's, re if it's really gonna hit the marker. Um, but then, they moved from that, and I was like, oh, no, this might get kind of... Eh. They showed Dishonored 2. Yeah. Um, yep. I called... I probably shouldn't have, but, like... About a month ago, I said, we'll see Dishonored 2 at E3. I knew that because I was told that. <laughs> I was told that by <laughs> one of my friends that actually worked at Bethesda. Yeah. Um, but, so I was like, okay. He said, you're, you're going to see the trailer, um, and then depending on how well that PC conference does, you might see gameplay. I was like, okay. But, yeah, Dishonored 2, there. Um, Emily is a main character. Very cool. Um, you get new Which, abilities. Um, I think she was one of the... Um, one of the people in Dishonored 1, or at yeah, least she was, was mentioned. She, she was in the first one. Um, so they're doing the story continuity. Okay. Um, and it's, of course, PS4, Xbox One, PC. Um, and then Dishonored Definitive Edition is coming to Xbox One and PS4 uh, this fall. I'm not sure about PC, but probably. I mean, everything, like Sleeping Dogs Definitive Edition came out on PC. Now, um, did you so. see anything different, like, well, within that trailer, like, what could possibly be as gameplay? Uh, like, anything, like, stood out in that, in that trailer? More like crowd control abilities. Crowd control? Okay. So Emily went to a room, dropped this like this netting bomb type thing. So it seemed like there were more stun lock moves or more okay. like have control over the situation no matter how it goes, which is cool. Uh, my only kind of complaint about Dishonored One, and this is a thing that a lot of people loved, is the teleporting. In my opinion, broke the game mm -hmm. because okay. you didn't really have to think about well, which way am I going to go attack this guy from? You would just teleport and then be there. Like, you wouldn't be like, how is this... Like, with Thief, the old-school Thief games, I'm a huge Thief fan. You would have to look at your environment and be like, okay, I want to go up there. Is there a way to do it? Mm -hmm. And then, like, okay, maybe I can shimmy over here. Maybe I can do this. Maybe I can do this. But with Dishonored, it, it's very liberating. But it also kind of... You know, you can just do it. Like, if I want to go up there, zip, and then you're right. up. Um, so hopefully I, uh, I'm... Uh, hopefully they're going to be taking advantage of that for the new levels. Mm, okay. Make it a little more balanced to where you have to use your teleport, but there are still weird trick jumps. And you know what I mean? like It's not a, like a, a get out of jail card. Like yeah, what? exactly. Because that's what it was. It was your escape card. Right. You could do that, throw it on a smoke bomb, you're done. Like okay. nobody knows where you're at anymore. Right. Um, so keep the difficulty up a little bit. I think it'd be good. Then they showed uh, Elder Scrolls Online. I did make a prediction that they'd show the first expansion. They did not do that. Um, they showed console. Ver they mentioned the console version. Said, "Yeah, we're now released. Uh, you know, everything's going well. Here's the stuff we're working on." And then they showed the Imperial City, um, and then the, the Orsinium, which is the home of the orcs, I think. Okay. Um, just showed content. I mean, I'm glad they were there at least to say, "Hey, guys, we remember this game exists." <laughs> right. Exactly. Um, <laughs> you know, and then kind of the. The one moment of the of the Bethesda conference that I sighed at was Elder Scrolls Legends. Uh, <laughs> oh, you know, the card game. The card game. <laughs> they, and this is exactly word for word what I put in my notes. Bethesda saw that sweet, sweet Hearthstone money Blizzard was raking in. <laughs> right. That's all it is. That's what you, you said. Can tell, quote, like, word for word. That's it. Word for word, man. Yeah. And, like, they just wanted that Hearthstone money. They wanted it bad. Um, yeah. yeah. They, they would have to, like, go through the, the same, uh, like... Like 
pl- like pay style of of like Hearthstone, you know, being on the mobile, free to play, all that stuff. Uh, but for like Elder Scrolls, so. And the only bad thing about it, I mean, that's gonna be hell. It'll be a cool, functioning game. A lot of people will play it. It'll be fine. It'll make mm-hmm. money for Bethesda. That's the whole point. But it's always weird to be the Me Too game. Or the you, second one? Yeah, right, right. Like, yeah. Hearthstone, well, we have a game like Hearthstone too. Right. Like, the Me Too. Like, we also have that. It's a weird <laughs> thing yeah. that you don't want to get into, because then you're just, at a certain point, you're just copycatting. You know, and mm. if it makes money, it makes money. Like, go for it. But, yeah, yeah, that's true. But you got to make it different. You got to make it different enough. Uh, but I'm not sure how they would want to make it too much different, because Hearthstone, the reason why it's so successful, is it's easy to play impossible to master mm-hmm. um if they keep that in mind i think elder scrolls legends will be fun but see you know see square should have been like on the ball in this with you know triple triad on the mobile right away no and, shit they know, had a game like they, they 10 years ago it, like a long time ago they had a game more than 10 years ago shit they had like built in but they didn't think about it nope. they put it in play online and final <laughs> fantasy 11 oh my god dang it play online Freaking square, man. Uh, but now it's in Final Fantasy fourteen. If they were smart, man, just mobile up Triple Triad. Yeah. Mobile it up, put it on PC, put it on Mac, put it on Linux, put it on phones, put it on Android, mm-hmm. put that shit on Kindle, whatever. Everywhere. Everywhere. On your Pit Boy, all that. But get it get it get the tape deck for the new Pit Boy. But yeah, <laughs> speaking of Fallout Four. Mm-hmm. So I was under the impression that, you know, what, what was it, two or three weeks ago, there was the leak that Guillermo del Toro's team was working on the teaser for Fallout 4. Um, like, his video studio was kind of helping with the production of the video. They let that leak in an interview. And so then they showed the, they showed the trailer before E3. So I thought, I was like, oh crap, they got called out. They want to show it just to get people off their back. What will they have for E3? So Todd Howard walks out like a baller. Looks like David Hasselhoff. He has his hair flipped back. He has the bronze skin, sun-kissed, like big Hollywood Todd Howard walking out. <laughs> right. Um, he shows a montage of Fallout 4 concept art. And I was like, okay, oh, yeah, they're, fill- yeah. Yeah, they're filling time. Like, they were going to show the trailer as the world premiere and be like, it's coming out, woo! Mm-hmm. But then they surprised me. Um, because then they're like, let's get into the game. And I was like, okay. They show the mirror. They show face sculpting in the mirror. Genius. That, that was awesome, yeah. Genius. That was an awesome creative character. Um, just... And this is a huge deal. Because Bethesda, normally their creative character, takes place in like a void. Mm-hmm. So you think your character looks great until you get in the game <laughs> and he looks yeah. like garbage. <laughs> and you're like, oh, geez, his nose is that big. Like, you, you look like a horse. And then, like but with this, of... you have yeah. stuff around you. You have textures around you. You have lighting around you. So you can kind of see, and your characters do movements. So you can see, how is this character actually going to look in the wasteland? Um, so pretty, uh, it's pretty good. Um, and of course, female playable characters, um, the new opening scene, they start pre-bomb. Yeah. So they start yeah. before the bomb drops. Right. Oh, man. They really want you to <laughs> hit the feels. They, they really do. They want you to feel that. And then, you know, you go up, you see Codsworth or Cadsworth mm-hmm. or whatever his name is, your robot, 200 years later. And he was like, oh, you're 200 years late for dinner. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know that type of stuff um i will say they have the new engine running mm-hmm. looks stellar like that new engine the lighting on it is ju- up there easily with like gta 5 you know it's not the best lighting i saw all show we'll get into mm-hmm. that but it looks great i mean and there's colors which is great for a fallout game right. <laughs> there's <laughs> actual color there hues there are blues <laughs> there are reds there are uh you know, there, there's like greens, which is all oh, um, just amazing. It looks like they really did upgrade kind of the, uh, the shooting mechanics, but right. they kept vats. They kept vats, yeah. So that's good, in my opinion. Uh, I love vats. I think it yeah. works. And um, let's see. But the lighting looks great. The Fallout Shelter phone game, that was a great kind of Apple moment. Mm-hmm. They were oh, like, yeah, you yeah, can yeah. play was, this game right now. You know, I was, like, I was like, "Oh, what happened to Android?" And then TK is like, "Fuck Android!" <laughs> <laughs> Where's Android? But now it's out on Android. I'm pretty sure it's coming out. It's coming out for Android too. Yeah, yeah. just we're a little bit later. <laughs> um, and then though, kind of the thing that whenever people first saw it, they were really split down the middle with Fallout 4. Uh, the building, 
like building things in game. Oh, okay. Using tires, using wood planks, using Nuka Cola caps, using mm-hmm. sugar bomb cardboard boxes, whatever. They basically are doing a mix of like a Daisy slash H one Z one slash Minecraft mm-hmm. in Fallout. Then you can also get a power generator, hook up things through wires, like so you can set up a turret defense thing up at your gate. But you have to have the resources to make your power run. Right. So it adds a hugely different dynamic. It's not required. They said it's like a base. It's like a side thing you can do to build your base. Um, but we're gonna see a lot of fun stuff come out of it, and it seems. It's a great way to do things. And then they show the thing I'm probably most excited about, which is the crafting. Right, right, right. Like, what what did they say? There was a... Um, gun, like, 80 uh, base guns or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, and guns, then, like, the guns are, like, very customizable. Yeah, and, and like, 700 variations on yeah. them and stuff. Just unreal. And, like, the crafting table looks like crafting is actually going to be worth your time. So instead mm-hmm. of saying, oh, I'll get plus five in armor penetration, you're going to get, like, oh, I put a nail gun on here. I made a right. teddy bear launcher. I made a, you know, like, it's that sort of goofy postal type stuff. Like, I've always said that the sillier Fallout is, the better it is. Mm-hmm. Keep this type of stuff going. Like, make it as ridiculous <laughs> as possible. Um, but, yeah, like, layered armor types... So you can mm-hmm. have like under armor and then you can have armor on top and then you can have helmets and then you can have stuff on the helmet like so then you you can really deck out your character the way you want you can really play the way you want right yeah um but yeah like november 10th 2015 release that surprised me as well not expecting this year oh like, yeah right, right right november 10th man yeah this year shoot that's like what four four months yeah it's way done like that <laughs> game is way close to done apparently it's done <laughs> yeah no like crazy yeah. Let's see. What's up, everybody? Yeah, we're right in the middle of the power hour. You can send in the comment. Yeah, a lot of people say, like, don't give uh, Bethesda credit for it. It came from a mod. Um, like, where where do you feel like you're going to be at in this game when, when you do play it? Are when I do be play all it? up in the cus- customizing your base or just... I know you're, you're an explorer, but, like, yep. what else are you going to be into? Probably the game. probably the gun stuff. The gun stuff. Like okay. I'll make a base that's functional. Mm. Um, I won't be like writing people's names. Like I won't turn it into Minecraft. But yeah. I'll make a base that I can go to that I can hang it out. Hell, I I'm gonna treat it like a WoW garrison. You know what I mean? Like I'm gonna <laughs> treat it as this place that I go hang out at a little bit. Then right. I'm gonna go explore, get more materials, see what I can unlock as far as weapon customization, and then mm. just basically do side missions. So yeah, like with with your dog. With the puppy, man. There's some dog yeah. meat action. That's what we're gonna dog, do. Dog, man. That's um, a German, isn't it? Do what? That was a that was a German, isn't it? A German she- mm-hmm. German Shepherd. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dog meat's been in every game. Yeah. Been in every can't, game. Can't die. Well, he can. He can. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, okay. he can. Oh I, yeah, he can. I saw that like. I think they said somewhere like he can't die in this game. I'm like, oh, okay. Oh, in Fallout Four, maybe I don't know yeah. about Fallout Four, but in <laughs> Fallout Three, you bet your ass. You bet, oh yeah, he'll explode into a billion pieces, man. You can oh, also sell man. him off to a slave trader. Oh no, <laughs> poor dog meat, poor dog oh, meat. Jeez. Um, but yeah, Bethesda kind of set the tone for E3, I think. Mm, yeah, because oh, they, they came they out. Definitely did. They came out swinging. Mm-hmm. Like they came out. And Todd Howard, yeah, he talked about the interactive pit boy, and it was great because he was like, "What did he say?" He said, um, his exact wording. He was like, "You know, we built this. It's a working pit boy. It can work mm. with your phone." And he was like, "It's a stupid gimmick, but it's the best fucking stupid gimmick." Yeah, yeah. That's I was like, <laughs> "Well done." Like, at least admit that yeah. this is just for, you know, the ridiculous people that I have. Like, who still has their Master Chief helmet from Halo Three? <laughs> you know, that can't fit. The cat helmet, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, like overall, I think Bethesda, this completely warranted them having a press conference. Oh, for sure. Um, yeah. You know, even if I gave Elder Scrolls Legends some flack, fine. They, they're they thinking ahead. Um, they're, they're trying to grow as a uh, publisher. But like mm-hmm. Doom, it's going to be solid. Dishonored 2 is going to be great. Um, more Elder Scrolls Online content. I mean, in Fallout 4, not a bad show. That's a, that was a solid lineup. That's a solid for, for a first time. Yes, conference. It's conservative enough to not make people think you're crazy. Yeah. But you've announced enough stuff to get people excited, and that's kind of the overall goal. 
um, of something like that. But yeah, what were your thoughts on Bethesda, Marco? Um, you know, I don't really have much like investment in terms of Bethesda, yeah. but like, like as a conference and like as the first time conference, like yeah, that's what they showed was pretty pretty solid. They had like you know a weird you know okay that's weird with Battle Cry, um, Fallout Amiibo, you know those Amiibo collectors. Yeah, there you go. Um, but it was overall like yeah like like you said set the tone pretty solid conference um yeah that was it get it got me hyped even though i'm not really into the bethesda games myself yeah it got me hyped ready ready for e3 so yeah 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 like it set the stage really really well and then um then the next day so i guess day one one or i think it's day two or is it day like zero really, yeah, because whatever. like who knows what the fucking days are for E3. <laughs> uh, but like okay, we'll say day one, the first like official big day of uh, E3 started mm-hmm. with Microsoft. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> first thing they showed is Halo Five Guardians. Yeah, they showed Halo Five. And it, I, I don't know, like I get, I'm I guess I'm more into like squad shooters. I'm not yeah. even like that much into shooters, but like squad shooters, I I, I can dig. Yeah, but yeah. They started with start with Halo Five Guardians. They, they got the Guardians, and all I put as the notes is it looks like Halo. <laughs> That's it. Like I mean, it's another Halo game. So yeah. uh, if you love Halo, you'll love it. You yeah. know, and it's uh, I do think it's interesting that they did kind of the Republic Commando point here, go here, heal him, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. direct traffic. You know, uh, I think I think that's pretty cool. Um, we'll see how really in depth they get on it. Right. right. But that's coming out what uh, 10 27 uh, 2015 so yeah october they were saying what like was it multiplayer story mode something like that they did mention something like that because they, yeah. they were they were focusing on wars i'm looking at it right now warzone multiplayer but i guess like i you know it's not i'm not really off the top of my head thinking if this was like like story mode multiplayer or just regular warzone multiplayer back. i think it looked like horde mode it okay, looks sort okay. of like a. It may be tied into the story somehow. Um, they may you may do that kind of like how you had to do that Mass Effect three multiplayer to get a hundred percent ready in the war for your single player. They might tie it in somewhere like that, but they just showed it. I mean, it looks yeah, it looks like a horde mode. Um, Halo is definitely that type of game that would work well. I mean, hell, you're kind of fighting off the horde anyway. Right. So, so uh, then kind of what intrigued me. <laughs> the next game. Is probably the one I'm most excited about out of the Microsoft mm. conference. Is Recore, which is by um, Inafune, Kenji. Yeah. yeah, Kenji Inafune, and then the people behind Metroid Prime. Um, 2016 release date, first party development. So this is like Inafune officially works for Microsoft now. Like, mm-hmm. that's huge. That's huge. Um, first party development, native backwards compatibility on the system. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. Um, yeah, we'll we'll get to the, we'll get to the, that type of stuff in just a second. But with Recore, they didn't show a lot. They showed the trailer. The core you can literally move from thing to thing to thing. The first thing I thought of was Dog from Half Life Two. Yeah. Um, what you make is you make him as your he's kind of your companion. But like, imagine having five of them. They can do different things. Right, right. So and you if can put you, them in different things and yeah, like oh, the flight and all this other stuff. Like oh, I my yeah. I need to record to my bird because I need to get yeah. an, the item that's out of reach or whatever. I need you to be a gorilla. So and I yeah. mean, Inafune, super smart developer. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm really interested to see kind of the stuff that he has planned for that. But so, that was the big yeah. So this was the stamp of Microsoft saying, like they always say, uh, like we care about like Japanese the Japanese audience. Yes. Like you know, we have we have uh, KG Nifune, so you know, Japan care about us, please. Notice yeah, us. please, please buy our system. Please notice us. Uh, <laughs> notice us, senpai. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, Recore probably the game I'm most stoked about from that conference. Um, mm-hmm. But then they dropped the bomb. They said native backwards compatibility for the Xbox One on all 360 games. Yeah, and I quote. So you don't have to rebuy the games you already bought. Yeah, that's the shot fired. Just that that's little Sony. Sony stab action. Yeah. And I agree, man. That's that's huge for this holiday. Yeah, no, for sure. Huge. Because yeah. there's a lot of people that can't warrant spending, even though the consoles have been out for, what, like two or three years now? Like, they can't warrant the price. They can't warrant 400 bucks. Yeah. 
But if my 70 360 games will play on an Xbox One, that's more incentive. What right. really blows me away, the part, and like this might just be a big deal to me because of course it would be, you can Twitch stream 360 games. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. natively. Yeah. Kind of the same way with a PS4 or Xbox One. If you're playing one of those games, it has the built in Twitch stuff. Right. Natively, you can Twitch stream any 360 game now. Mm-hmm. That's good business for Twitch. That's good business for all of these old game developers. I mean, um, you can't really buy a lot of 360 games new anymore. Right. But I bet GameStop's going to love this. <laughs> you know, like shit. any used place yeah. is going to make like out bandits. Because people, I know, hell, if I had an Xbox One, I would go spend two hundred dollars tomorrow on three hundred and sixty games. Yeah, I just grab the more, the most like you know, random games. You got Star Ocean. You got the Crackdowns. Yeah. You got, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, um, yeah, Halo, like ODST, Reach. Yeah. That's all I want, yeah, man. man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, yeah. the, I like. I'm more interested in the three hundred and sixty games I could play on my Xbox One mm-hmm. than any of the Xbox One games. Just how I am. Like, Recore is one game, and. I'm not going to spend $400 to play a $60 game. You're just not going to do it. Speaking of $400 things to buy, what's next up? Let's see. Um, <laughs> oh, the controller, I mean. <laughs> oh, God, that controller. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah, they showed the new Elite Gamer controller. What do you think? <laughs> I'm like, not seeing your face, but... <laughs> It is what it is. I think yeah. the Xbox One controller works fine. They don't need the. You can put four joysticks on it. You can take it apart. Blah, 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 blah. Like oh. <laughs> that's fine. But how much are those little parts going to be? And then if they can come off that easy, what's to say I'm not going to have to spend thirty dollars a month replacing a joystick? So Limo did have a question for this. Yes. Uh, she said, "How? How about that new Xbox controller? It seems like a good thing, but I just hate how they push PC users to use Windows 10." What do you think? I I agree, but that's b- same as it ever was. Yeah. You know, like, unfortunately, that's the way it is. Windows 10, here's the thing. At least you don't have to buy it. Because, <laughs> right. God, wait. It's it, free. It, yeah, if you guys wanted to really get pissed off, go from XP to Windows 7. Oh, gosh. You had to spend 200 bucks for that shit. No free upgrades. You just had to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then from Windows 7, you got the free Windows 8. And then the Windows 8 and Windows 7 users can get free Windows 10. So right. it's a free upgrade. They have to they have to get people to use the same infrastructure. You mm-hmm. know, I mean, they just have to. They're Microsoft. Um, as much as they don't want to admit being Apple, they're pretty Apple. You know, like <laughs> they they want to be. Uh, we want you right here. We want to keep you right here and direct traffic and all that stuff. Um, but like, yeah, the Windows XP to Windows Seven jump sucked because you had to buy it. Um. But now that they're giving away for free, it's not as bad. But yeah, it's just yeah, it's one of those things. It mm-hmm. comes with the yeah. territory. Um, not to say it's good, but yeah, right, right, it is what it is. But uh, then uh, Todd Howard came back out on the Microsoft conference, and I was like, "Whoa, what is this? Why is he here and not, you know, he won't be? This means he won't be at Sony." Um, right, right, right. Yeah. A follow-up for mods made on PC are playable for free on the Xbox One. That's that's pretty interesting. Big. Yeah. Um, I'm curious as to what the time turnaround would be. Like, if you publish a mod, how quickly does it show up? Does Microsoft filter those? Right. Is it that whole, you know, Microsoft patching procedure Bingo. type thing? Or, do yeah. they do it every, once every two weeks, and then they bring out a new flood of ten mods? Right. Or, or do they go live the moment they go live on PC? Yeah. Um, that's a wait and see thing. Probably it's going to be column A. Probably you're going to have to wait, but you'll get them. But you have to wait. Microsoft has to verify them. Yeah. Um, and verification process for Microsoft. I know indie developers, and they hate hate it because <laughs> yeah, they, can, they have to pay. They have to pay to be able to patch their game. Not only that, but then you're on a waiting list. Right. Yeah. So you could have a patch today. Your Xbox users won't get it until four months from now, and right. it's not your yeah. fault. Come on. It's just in queue, man. It's just sitting there in a basket waiting to go. Yeah. Um, so Microsoft needs to really pick up the pace on that. Um, especially, this might be the thing that kicks her ass enough to do it. Mm-hmm. You know, immediate. Like, get it going. Um, but then they showed plans for the Zombies Garden Warfare 2. Dangerous hilarious zone. game. Yeah, hilarious game. It's a lot yeah. of fun. Haters are going to hate, but that game is fun. Um, that's coming spring 2016. Forza Motorsport. <laughs> 
Can we talk about the sex music they played during more that more car drop? Sex. And then like this, just just very slow, (laughs) just waiting for that climax. That ass. (laughs) That ass. So ridiculous. I laughed out loud. You guys watching live saw me laugh out loud. I was like, "What the fuck is this?" Like, oh, so silly. (laughs) Um, but yeah, that's coming um September sixth of this year. A Dark Souls three. Microsoft uh got the lock on the trailer. For Dark yeah, Souls, it's going to yeah. come out for everything. Like, don't get us wrong, but um, it's going to be it's going to be good stuff, man. Um, early 2016, um, the Division beta in December for Xbox One. Yeah. Um, and then October 13th is the release date of Rainbow Six. Yeah. Um, the cool thing about the Xbox One version of Rainbow Six Siege, it comes with Vegas One and Two. You have three games right there. Three games and one. And you Vegas know. One and Two are pretty good, man. Yeah. Pretty good. Um. Let's see, and then uh, let's see, and then gigantic. That was the first time I've ever seen it. I know Swanda, regular in chat, she's been in that, or she's been in queue to get into the beta for like a year. She's oh yeah, it. yeah. But I never, that. I never saw it. It looked like uh, you saw that fox with a bow and arrow. Mm-hmm. And you were like, yeah. that's what Kami's playing. Yeah, that's 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 oh yeah, <laughs> Kami's voting. That that's it. <laughs> that bow and arrow right there. Uh, but yeah, they showed that. Um, so the beta is in August. It is free to play. They were talking um, okay, a little bit on that game. They were talking yeah. about how it's kind of it's kind of first person shooter, kind of MOBA because mm-hmm. you have your guardian, like yeah. And then um, they, you know, the opponents had their own guardian. So like, I guess you are you guys are the minions, so to speak, trying to get to the guardian. Maybe so. Your guardian. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Um, because or more like, like more like evolve. I don't know. It's yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I can see what you're saying, because it, it kind of reminded me of, uh, there's a game on PC called Sanctum, which mm-hmm. is a, it's a tower defense game, but you are, it's a first-person shooter, and you're in lanes. So, and there's yeah. also games like Monday Night Combat that are, um, but that's more arena-focused, and it is, like, big world, right. symmetrical map type stuff. Uh, but yeah, it could be interesting. And I mean, hell, free to, more free to play stuff on consoles, the better. In my right, opinion. yeah, for sure. Just have people play shit, you know? Yeah. Um, and then Tacoma, which I'm pretty stoked about. That's uh, the Fulbright game, uh, Steve Gaynor, that did Gone Home. Oh, okay. Tacoma looks like Gone Home mixed with Alien. Because <laughs> instead of going to a house after coming home from college, you're now stranded on a spaceship. Right. And you have to figure out what happened. Yeah. Um, and, like, if you guys have not played Gone Home, holy crap. You owe it to yourself. Play Gone Home. Amazing game. Amazing in-game storytelling. Narrative stuff. Like Fulbright are kind of masters at first-person storytelling. Mm-hmm. Um, they're up there with the best. They're up there with Valve. They're up there with you know 2K for Bioshock. They're up with you know I put them in that same league, and it's only a crew of like five people. Um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So those guys are kicking ass. Um, but yeah, that's gonna be one to look out for is Tacoma. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's Ashen, um, which I can't quite is remember. The, is their answer to Journey? Oh yeah, that's what it says on like the title article. So I was like, all right. <laughs> yeah, guess so. And then uh, Beyond Eyes uh, by Tiger and Squid. Uh, that and like Cuphead they showed, which I adore Cuphead. So they showed some of the indie stuff. Yeah, that was the kinda, first time I saw Cuphead. I was like, wow, that looks good. Cuphead, like uh, me and Brian Valita saw it. Like we talked with some of those guys, and we yeah. saw it really early. And they were like, we're going for the old like Steamboat Willie. Yeah. Like 1920 animation. And I was like, oh, fucking do it. Like, that's <laughs> awesome. That's, um, yeah. I and it saw looks it. great. They put that filter. Now? Like, oh, dude, that's like sick. They put that filter over it, man. Ooh, that's yeah. so good. And then, uh, let's see. So, yeah, they did that. And then they did the Xbox mm. game preview. Um, mm. um, yeah, Xbox game preview is kind of Xbox's version of Steam Early Access and Greenlight. EA did the same thing. Yeah. So, yeah. play a game. Pay us to play a game before it's playable. Yeah, basically. I was, I was like, Peter Moore, what are you doing there? Like, oh, okay, you're in and out, I guess. Okay. <laughs> Peter Moore, please. Um, <laughs> I wonder if he still has that arm tattoo. That's what I was at saying. Man. <laughs> show that tattoo. <laughs> show it, man. Just show it. Man. Um, let's see. And then Dean Hall, creator of Daisy, came out. Yeah. That his new name is called Ion. And it's then an show apparently. Do what? It's an MMO apparently. It's an MMO, really? Because at yeah. this conference, they didn't announce what it was. But then afterwards, I heard that you can control organs. 
in the body. Oh, I guess. So, like, yeah, <laughs> like, I don't fucking know. Uh, so you can, like, control the lungs to breathe. I guess that's the MMO part. I, maybe <laughs> everybody, so. Every, everybody you need five, right, everyone plays a white blood cell. Yeah. Uh, two billion, uh, two billion player. Who's going to function the colon? Oh, my. <laughs> Twitch will function the colon. <laughs> Twitch, band. This Twitch, right Twitch, away. Twitch chat on like some of the big time streamer streams, they will function the colon. Um, <laughs> let's see. So then a Rise of the Tomb Raider is yeah. November 10th. So Marco, what do you think about timed exclusive on 360? Uh, or 360 on Xbox One? It's a thing. You know, I, at, at this point in my gaming life, mm. I don't really care. Unless... Unless it's like a, I, I don't like locks. I really don't like locks. Yeah. On on things I really like, you know. Um, but time exclusives, you know, it, it used to bother me back then. Yeah. But to find out that it's coming later down the line, it's like, oh, that's fine then. Yeah. People people will play it later. The, the you know people uh, the PlayStation people will play it later or something like that. But I find it interesting that he, they're using Tomb Raider reboot Tomb Raider as the time exclusive rather than like anything else. I agree with that. Like, why yeah. Tomb Raider? It's like, so okay. There's, yeah. What's what's there that warrants like that time exclusive? I get maybe the sales of it. I guess. Or or do you think that this is Microsoft trying to combat Uncharted? I guess because they're sort of the same genre. Xbox needs one of those games because they don't have one. Yeah, Uncharted is kind of the master of the craft when it comes to that style of quick time event, crazy action, epic scale game. Yeah, let's see, like you and and you guys also talked about in the past where, or I'm pretty sure people in general, like once when two, um, Uncharted came out, you know they called it Dude Raider, you know Dude they were, Raider, they, yeah, yeah, they yeah. Were making it fun of the fact that it looked like Tomb Raider. Yeah. Now that Tomb Raider comes out, comes out, now it's like it's the other way around. Like, all right, come on, well, yeah. I guess, I guess I I can see the fact that where Tomb Raider needs to be that game to be the like the uncharted, you know, rival mm. in, in a sense, but yeah, I, I guess. Right. And I don't know. I think cuz if anything is system exclusive anymore that's not a first party or second party title, mm. um you're wasting money. Yeah. I firmly believe that. Why would you lock yourself out of the potential sales of two other platforms right. for a thing that already costs you however many million dollars to make? Why would you give up money? Because God knows one company didn't pay you enough to compensate. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I, I'm just pulling numbers out of my ass here, but let's say you're Tomb Raider and Microsoft comes up and says, I want, we want to offer you guys $10 million to make the next Tomb Raider and keep it locked in just for us. Mm -hmm. You're telling me that Tomb Raider, over the course of three systems, being PC, PS4, and Xbox One, won't make ten million dollars. Right. It will. I would think. I would think it's the fact that the company paid them that so much money to lock them in, and like they're, and the fact that they're also still willing to back them with whatever else stuff that they need. Yeah. That that company is gonna like, yeah, yeah, we'll just throw money at you. Don't throw money at you. Yeah. It's because I, I kind of understand it more with Sony and Street Fighter in a sense than I do with Tomb Raider and, and Microsoft yeah you know? it's yeah right like it just doesn't make sense for Tomb Raider yeah it's not the be all end all like mm -hmm. it's not like you got the exclusive exclusivity to Madden for three years yeah you know what I'm saying like a game that you guarantee you know for a fact it's gonna sell as it sells every year mm -hmm. like uh I don't know, man. It just seems like rotten business. It it is just yeah, like yeah. The it's just it's just weird that it, that Tomb Raider is the game that's on lock for yeah. whatever reason. Yeah, I don't but, know. Yeah. Um. But yeah, there's that. There's a uh, let's see. So they did the Tomb Raider deal uh, November 10th. Rare yeah. replay. Biggest surprise of the show. <laughs> like for real, <laughs> man. Replay, like yeah, yeah. Thirty rare games for thirty bucks. Hell yes. Like that. Might be that and Recore might be the only two games that might make that me buy that interest. system. <laughs> yeah, the system seller, the rare replay. Yeah, who knew? Um, and then they showed um, their game Sea of Thieves, which looks interesting, like a multiplayer 
everyone has their own part oh, on a boat. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I like that. Thing. That caught my like. Oh yeah, I would love to just be a, a function in a boat and do my task. Yeah, and then like we're sailing the seas and you know pirating in a sense. Right. You know, like yeah, that exactly. caught my interest. Interest like in a, in an MMO sense. I was like, yeah, I would, I would like to do that. Like I still, again, to me, that squad, like gameplay, like. That that's what catches my interest in like games like that. Yeah, just actual uh, you know actual group. Right. Gaming. You have to do this as a group, or yeah. else it won't work. Yeah. Like, that type of stuff is pretty interesting. Uh, yeah, the the Xbox One, the Xbox One controller comes with Oculus Rift. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I get it. But, that's an interesting business decision. But that's that's bizarre. I don't know if that's. If there's one SKU that comes just with Oculus Rift and then the other one comes bundled with a controller, or like what the deal is. Um, but then but then again, Microsoft is coming out with their own, with HoloLens. Yeah, which so they like, showed next. Like, buy Oculus and then buy HoloLens, or? <laughs> right, yeah, who you knows? Know. Like, what are you, what are you um, guys doing? <laughs> the whole VR thing seems a little, I think it's a little silly. But in 10 years, I'll be buying one you know what i mean like if it becomes a standard yeah um i just don't think it will there was I a think... game there was a game on pc conference uh i think it was made by the e like pc uh, pcp or the the eve online uh developers oh had... yeah um ccp or whatever yeah, ccp i'm sorry yeah um yeah they had a, a spaceship game that looked awesome like that that could work yeah for from what i saw but yeah you would have to you would have to watch it too i think it was like eve Valkyrie? Was Valkyrie, it? Yeah, 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 that one. It looks cool. I mean, hell, spaceship games with Oculus um, or with any sort of VR, that's kind mm. of, uh, in my opinion, why that stuff was made. That yeah. has to be easier because it's just a big skybox. Right. Um, but what really blew me away, I would never use this. I would never buy it. I would never recommend anyone buy it. But the Minecraft with the HoloLens, when oh, they had that table <laughs> set up, and like the whole world of Minecraft like came up and then you could like zoom in with your eyeballs yeah. and like see the character like that is amazing and stupid as hell <laughs> you know what I mean like who's that's gonna buy this at, that's something you would see at malls yes you will pay five dollars for ten minutes to see hey look at my Legos come to life yeah but who's gonna spend that money to do that very rare very not a lot of people those, <laughs> like, those kids those kids yeah, maybe so. It. Maybe Minecraft is bigger than I think, and all the yeah. kids want to be in VR. Um, let's see. Let's see. Um, yeah, I put in quotes. I put it was Minority Report shit. <laughs> like that's what it reminded me of, man. Yeah, like that's just Iron Man. You know. Um, and then they show Gears of War Ultimate. It's cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Have have an Ultimate Edition, and then yeah. like, like make it more in more in the present i guess in terms of functionality and like gameplay modes yeah kind of give it the full remaster treatment let yeah. people play it give them like what steam achievements like yeah. do all that type of stuff let it play on 4k displays you know the whole shebang yeah. do it i mean gears good game bring back the coal train uh bring back coal train needs his own game coal train does need his own i would buy a c i would buy a yearly installment of a coal train game coal train just man. yelling at people oh runs the whole grain baby Oh man! <laughs> uh, so like, then they show Gears of War four. Yeah, couldn't dark. see shit. <laughs> that was dark. I couldn't see anything other than like their their chest lights. Yeah, right. It was That's like it. Sam Fisher hiding in the shadows. You see his green goggles. Yeah, and then and then whatever that monster they were chasing, and that was it. I I couldn't see. Like I I would love to be excited for that game. Yeah, I just don't know if they installed lights on the planet that they were at. Like, yeah. I don't know what the fuck was going down. And I guess it's it's revolving around like new characters, other than like um, what's what's his name, and not and not Dom, I guess. But yeah, uh, um, yeah, like, blonde haired duder. Yeah, uh, can't remember his name either. But it shows how memorable he is. Um, <laughs> so I don't know how good of an idea it is to start an entire game on him, but maybe this might be a Gears Four starring Coltrane. That 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 would have been it, dude. Like, hell, man, that would have been incredible. But hopefully, he'll make like an appearance or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Gears of War Four, you mean weird blue lights somewhere? Yeah, exactly. Like shaky exactly. blue light simulator. Uh, I guess it's it's more Gears. I mean, 
a great way to cross promote uh, Arcus, the uh, Gears of War Ultimate, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it comes out. Uh, Gears of War Four comes out holiday 2016. Mm-hmm. Um, overall, for and that's kind of it. Then there was a bunch of people talking, and Microsoft is here to stay, like that yeah. kind of stuff. Uh, every E3 conference from the big three has that type of stuff. But uh, let, let's see. As my overall note, overall not a bad conference. Backwards compatibility is th- the definite highlight of the conference as far as a business standpoint is concerned. Uh, the games look solid. There was nothing mind blowing. Mm. Uh, Inafune's Recore is game of the conference, in my opinion, alongside the Rare Collection. So that's my kind of overall thought of it. I just think backwards compatibility natively yeah. is going to sell a lot of systems this holiday. Yeah, for sure. Because parents won't mind getting the new thing if they can so play they don't the have old to deal stuff. with all oh, that they already bought the old thing but you know it, there's more if, if the parent is more invested into like like games they can see the value in that right yeah you know? because they can still play the old stuff that yeah. money we spent on 360 games is not wasted right um yeah, yeah. so yeah that is microsoft microsoft pretty pretty solid um a surprise one, I feel like one surprise for me, yeah, was Recore, and then everything else was kind of standard in a way. Yeah, it was conservative again. Yeah. But Microsoft's not in a place where they can drop bombs. Right, right, like, right. Like they're not do they're doing okay. There's it's not like they're just oh we're we're counting pennies now. Yeah. But Microsoft's doing fine. Yeah. But they're not stealing the show. Mm-hmm. Like this is the console thing from a business standpoint right now is Sony's ball game. Mm-hmm. They did a safe conference, showed some new stuff, showed some cool technology, yeah. kind of wowed people a little bit, dropped the hammer on backwards compatibility. Yeah. It, this was very much a Sony, it's your move conference. Mm-hmm. For like, sure. we're going to play it safe. Let's see Sony fuck up. <laughs> Plot twist didn't happen. Right. Um, but, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. But, uh, but next up, we got Ubisoft. Um, uh, let me see. First started with South Park. Um, <laughs> the fractured, butthole. <laughs> the fracture. That's the name of the game. Is the fractured butthole? That's literally <laughs> the name of their game. I was. I didn't. I didn't see the conference at all. But okay. <laughs> that's the name of the South Park game. Is that's the fractured funny. butthole. <laughs> but hey, more that it's weird though. They were working with a uh, different studio this time. They oh, worked really? with Obsidian okay. for the Stick of Truth. Um, and it's great because it had really funny, good writing because it was by the same people that brought us freaking Planescape Torment. Oh, gosh. One of the best written games ever made. <laughs> but then they wrote a South Park game, so how ironic is that? Mm-hmm. Um, but, but yeah, South Park, new South Park. It's yeah. based on kind of, it's their take on, like, the Avengers. Um, instead of being a wizard and do, like, Lord of the Rings epic stuff, you're a superhero doing okay. Avengers epic stuff. So, yeah. It's satire, so mm-hmm. it'll be satire of all the like the Marvel and DC movies coming out. Yeah. Um, then one, it's called For Honor, mm-hmm. and it's a brand new IP. It looks like this mix between Dynasty Warriors and Chivalry, but then, so basically the way it worked is you had three different time zones. You had like Samurai, mm-hmm. you had uh, Viking. what was it? That Viking, and then like a medieval knight. Yeah. And... It was kind of this big, all these NPCs are fighting, all these mobs are fighting around you. And then you go up against other people in PvP. It reminded me of Bushido Blade. Oh, okay. And I got stoked. I was like, oh my god, we need a game like Bushido Blade. Yeah. Bushido Blade, <laughs> one of the coolest 1v1 battle games ever. Yeah. Because you can end a fight in two seconds. You can get that. Yeah, one slash. One hit. One hit. Basically, one hit. One hit kills. Not yeah. all the time. Not all the time, no. But if you time it if you time it right, if you play your character right, you can do one hit kills pretty consistently. Yeah. And uh but yeah, that tension, that certain I need to make the right move or make my opponent make the wrong move. Mm. That sort of mind play could come in uh, really, really cool. But yeah, I'm hoping for the Bushido Blade style combat. Um Did they say uh new genre never never done before or something like that? They did. Or maybe I don't know if they meant for Ubisoft, because that makes sense. That makes sense. I, I, I saw his tweets with like, but you know, there's Musou games, and yeah. they also said like, but there's also, there's Dynasty Warriors. Yeah. I'm like okay. All right. right. Well, maybe they meant like for Ubisoft because it's kind of like that same Ubisoft, thing. Yeah. With, with books, you can have 
30 first editions of a book mm. because a different publisher can pick up the book and then like I if we made a publishing company for books and bought the rights to publish um, you know A Tale of Two Cities okay. we could make a first edition of A Tale of Two Cities that book's been around forever you yeah. know what I mean like but maybe that's what they were saying is for Ubisoft this is a new genre for us okay which, yeah Swan is saying yeah new to Ubisoft okay th there you go so maybe so maybe not maybe they're just insane um <laughs> But then, then they showed. I needed a. I didn't jot down the actual name of the expansion, but the Trials Fusion expansion. So the DLC, yeah, yeah, no new name, but like. Well, well, it's like Max. Was, it's Max something. Max Fury Armageddon or something. Max Fury. And you're a cat on a unicorn. Yeah. With a with like a machine gun. Yeah. <laughs> That's just rad. Like that game's so stupid anyway. But that please add that. Give him special abilities. Mm. I'll start playing Trials Fusion again. You yeah, know what I mean? You were like, on Trials Fusion. I was on day. that early yeah. Twitch days, man. Early Twitch days, man. Early, early Twitch days. I was playing Trials Fusion. Same time we were playing DC Universe Online. <laughs> Same time we were playing Destiny. Yeah. Like early Twitch, brother. Oh, um, that's so early. Oh God! But yeah, Trials Fusion, bro. It was like Power Hour episode, like number four or something. <laughs> right. Yeah. It really was. Uh. But yeah, and then they showed the game that out of Ubisoft, it's one of the two games I'm super excited about. It's The mm. Division. Yeah. Um, they said the beta is early 2016, a March 8th release date for uh, 2016. Nice. Okay. So sooner than I thought, to be honest with you. I thought holiday next year for The Division, but March 8th, not bad. Mm. Um, looks cool. Looks like a difference between, uh, you know, that Steam game that we played a little bit on stream called Defiance. Yeah, yeah. Looks a little bit like Defiance mixed with like Tabula Rasa mixed okay. with like a Ghost Recon four person squad combat game. Mm -hmm. Um so it's it's kinda hard to explain what it is. It's it's not super complicated. I mean you're surviving in a wasteland with other people, so it's kind of an, a squad based MMO, I guess you could mm -hmm. say. But then you go into certain places, you go into uh like these dark areas or something. And then you get better loot, but you also have a higher chance to die and get robbed. So, like, right. Daisy. Um, just really cool, interesting mechanics in that. Um, the scripted banter during the gameplay thing was stupid. I hate scripted banter at E3. <laughs> sure. Hey, Jim, Gosh. let's go see what's in this box. And then they you walk over. You having fun? Oh, no! Um, they had Marvin there. They said, oh, Marvin would save him. <laughs> Marvin gets all the epic loot. Yeah, yeah. Shane! I'm gonna take the best, and we're gonna be the best, see? Take a look at all these yams. Um, <laughs> look at these yams. Oh, uh, that should got. be a shirt. Um, so then, uh, they, yeah, they showed the division. I'm really looking forward to it. The next game is Anno 20, uh, 2205, a city builder game. Anno is a good series, mm. very specific taste. I like the games. Another one, cool. Yeah, like you know, nothing outrageous, but um, and then Just Dance, and it was funny during the live stream. Because as soon as Just Dance came on, everyone was like, boo, get that the fuck off of here, and all this. <laughs> if you guys knew how much money oh, Just Dance man. made, like, every month. Yeah. Jeez. They make money. Money. They make, it's, they, it's they on, have. It's on the mobile now. So it is. Like, they have that make it rain money. Yeah. That's, that's how much money they get from Just Dance. You know? So, yeah. Um, Jason Derulo performed and was terrible. Oh. <laughs> God, he sucked. <laughs> I saw him on like Jimmy Kimmel didn't do bad. Yeah. He was dreadful. You could tell they probably just got him. He was there. Yeah, he just They're like, hey, there, dude, you want to go see him? To He's like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, he was okay. really bad. But then uh, Just Dance um, said the unlimited subscription service. What like they, about? Like they need to make more money. It's basically right. for however much money a month. Oh, I think the people are outside my door. There he is. Listen. <laughs> I hear that. I hear that lawnmower. Oh, is it gonna that do it? That leaf blower. That leaf blower. Texas Chainsaw Massacre is happening outside right it's now. It's real right now. Right now. Dude, some um, war is happening right outside your door. Right Shane. outside. Just that sequel is happening. Okay, he's leaving. But um, but I didn't really. I, Just Dance makes so much money, man. Yeah. Like, but the subscription service. Basically, they didn't say how much it's gonna cost. But for a certain amount of money a month, you get new songs given to you on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. okay. So you don't have to buy the DLC packs, you don't have to do all that stuff. They just give you songs. Um, 
But and a copy of the game is required, of course. Yeah. Why would yeah. you get that without the game? So, uh, but yeah, like it was it was great though. Cause, but that that's how Ubisoft makes all their money is just dance, like mm-hmm. all of it. Um, then the other big highlight for me for the Ubisoft conference was Rainbow Six Siege. Mm-hmm. I'm so stoked about that game because I played Rainbow Six back in the day. I mean, I'm talking the Rainbow Six that barely ran on, like, a Pentium computer type <laughs> stuff. Um, like, they're bringing back Terrorist Hunt, which, that is the most fun mode that has ever been in a Tom Clancy game. It's okay. it's a game, or it's a mode that you spawn into a level, and then you pick a difficulty, and then there's random terrorist spawns. Okay. You don't know where they're at. They could be anywhere. So then That's- what you do is their co-op mode... So you're brought in co-op, and you take out you get high scores. You do it in the fastest time possible. You have to do it safely. Uh, so you have to use mechanics. You have to be on point all the time because you never know what each room's gonna have. Um, but it's rad. It's a super rad game. I'm so glad they added it. Um, Angela Bassett is in the Angela game. Angela Bassett, yeah. Big get, man. And she seemed genuinely excited about being in the game. Like yeah. she came out, she talked with um, Aisha Tyler. She was like, "Listen, like this was a lot of fun. This was a lot of fun." Um, so I'm glad they got her because a hell of an actress, man. Like taking them them big guns with Angela Bassett. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm so stoked about Terrorist Hunt. So Limo saying for Just Dance, they also they also said you don't need a video capture device on your console to play it. You can just use your mobile. Okay. Yeah, you can use your mobile phone. You basically hold your phone out in front of you. So yeah. what they're trying to do, I think there's a mo- there may already be one or they may be in talks about it, making mm-hmm. a purely mobile version. You don't even have to own a game system to play yeah. Just Dance. Yeah. That money though, that money, that money hat, yeah. the money train that they're making on that freaking game, man. Like Crazy. like like going back to Bethesda, like you, I'm pretty sure people are wondering like why did they put a mobile game out there for Bethesda? Like why not? No shit. You know? Like that's just more money, you know, on the like on the side stuff that they can just on like uh, to sell, you know, like extra whatever, extra energy, extra items, extra like cosmetics, like that's that's like almost the core principle of free to play. Yes, you know. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it, overall, I mean, we know Sin is playing it. We know uh, mm-hmm. Vamp is playing it. We know there's quite a few people already playing Fallout Shelter, and they love it. Yeah. They think it's great. So why not? Yeah. You expand your brand. Same thing with Just Dance. Why not? You expand your brand. People know what Just Dance is. It's literally a household name. Yeah. Like, my grandma knows about Just Dance. <laughs> oh, nice. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> that's just how it works. That's how it works. Yeah. It's like, if you guys thought Rock Band and shit was... And they said this at the conference. Just Dance is the highest grossing music game ever made. Oh, wow. Ever. More money than Rock Band, any of them. More money than Guitar Hero, any of them. More money than Dance Central, but that's not hard. Um, (laughs) Shots fired. Uh, (laughs) But yeah, Just Dance is not going anywhere. Um, They showed track, moving on from Rainbow Six Siege and stuff, uh, Track Mania. I'm a big fan of Track Mania. That game is ridiculous. You basically make your own levels. You try to race as fast as possible with thousands of people in the world. Um, it's fun. You could sabotage people. It's a blast. It's like, mm. imagine you know, micro machines and Hot Wheels. Those oh, tracks gosh, that you yeah. can make. It's that. Like it's That's a, awesome. it's a Minecraft for those people. Yeah. Um, because you can make whatever you want, and then you have to. Now they have an auto generate level button. Mm-hmm. You hit one button, and it makes a new level procedurally. It's rad. Okay. Um, then they showed Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Now. I think they're way overboard on Assassin's Creed. I think they need to take a break. I think it's come to it's it's gonna fall it's uh it's gonna fall off worse than Call of Duty did. They're on their way down in terms of that game. Like, yeah, that's too much. It's it was too much during Assassin's Creed Three, and we've had four or five games since then. Yeah, Limo Limo tweeted out like thirty minutes ago saying more Assassin's Creed. Please, please take a five-year break. Yes, I agree. Absolutely. Five-year great. Then bring it back. Reboot the franchise. Whatever you got to do. Um, the only appealing thing about Assassin's Creed Syndicate is, like, that's the era of Jack the Ripper. Mm. How genius would it be if your assassin was Jack the Ripper? 
Right, right. There you go. That's it. That's your story. That's your storyline. We there, wrote it. It's a wrap. Their trump card will be Japan. Or possibly Russia. Ooh. More so more so more so Asian Ooh. setting. You know? But like Russia Cold War shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You I know? get behind that. Like those those are gonna be their trump cards, their emergency like we need to throw this out now or release this now because we're not making as much money. Yeah, please make Japanese because uh, I have one in China, but it's the side scroll. Oh yeah, style. yeah, no, yeah, no, you um, need like an actual. Yes, an actual Assassin's, Assassin's Creed. Creed. Give me as close to Tenchu as possible. Yeah, oh, there you go. As close <laughs> as fucking pie. I want Tenchu back so bad with Batman combat and all that stuff. Yeah. Speaking of shit, man, I could get Hell, Xbox One. I could go buy Tenchu Z for the 360 and stream that go. shit. There, there you go, go, man. There you go. <laughs> um, but then, the biggest like brain explode moment of the entire Ubisoft conference, they showed like a seven minute trailer on this open world, just cause, crazy shooter, open world, do the missions however you want to do them with mm -hmm. a squad MMO style game, and it's Ghost Recon Wildlands. Yep. Yes, it is. What? Like. That looked great. <laughs> that looked fantastic. Yeah. We were all in chat like, what is this? Because it looked really good. So good on you, Ubisoft, for making me yeah. care about a Ghost Recon game. <laughs> you know? Um, but it looked great. The graphics, uh, unbelievable. Uh, it looked fun. Squad-based shooter. I mean, yeah. tactical, big. You know, you can have someone two miles away sniping. Or keeping an eye out on you doing a mission, going to blow shit up, like mm -hmm. rad, rad yeah. stuff, man. Um, but that's Ubisoft. Like overall, uh, Marco, what do you think about the Ubisoft conference? Uh, well, to be honest with you, I did not see it at yeah. just at that time because I was at work. But I was just hearing about what was going on, and uh, Aisha Tyler not doing the greatest job this time around. But I guess they didn't really did they really show a lot because it looks like I'm looking at the news articles on on Destructoid. Yeah. It's it's a like less of a list than the, what others have shown. Yeah, not really because I mean Ubisoft had their trump cards. Uh, they they also talked about um, like they also talked about and um, ba -ba -ba -ba, Trackmania, Assassin's Creed, Division, Yeah, Anno, Trials Fusion for Honor, South Park. So once again, it was a solid conference. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of big surprises. I think for Damn. Honor has a lot of promise. Mm -hmm. uh, they showed more on the division, which what uh, I was hoping for. They yeah. announced Rainbow Six Siege has terrorist hunt, which isn't a big deal to a lot of people, but I think that's gonna that's gonna make me buy the game. Mm -hmm. Just that one mode, I will buy the game because that mode is a ton of fun. Um, another track mania, which is interesting. Um, of course, more Assassin's Creed. But then yeah. yeah, the Ghost Recon deal. So not like super out of the ordinary conference. I will say the past two years, the Ubisoft conferences have been terrible. So mm -hmm. it was nice to see them have a good one. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, sure. welcome like you, everybody coming in. We got Summer, yeah. we got Brad, we got. Not like uh, <laughs> the one Ubisoft conference where uh, James Cameron was just, was just talking about Avatar. Yeah. Oh, and, like, yes. Nothing was he shown. had, right, they showed slides. Here's Avatar. Thanks, everyone. And you're like, <laughs> I, you wasted what did 40, we listen to? 45 minutes yeah, 40, of that guy like, fucking talking. Minutes. I love you, James Cameron, but jeez, oh, man. man. He just sabotaged it. Yeah. Um, so um, let's see. Uh, Lima was asking, "Do we miss the e uh, EA conference?" I mean, I don't know kind of when it happened. So, that was the one I skipped. Okay, so let me look. Let me look around. Yeah, as, we'll, as, we'll talk about. Um, it. I know Mass Effect. What is it? Andromeda, Andromeda, something yeah. like that. Um, K Katie is all over that right now. Yeah, Katie so is. Katie I know. Is uh, I know. Spes Victus is that leg right now. <laughs> like, there's a lot of people big on to that new Mass Effect. Um, let's see. I'm more Mass Effect. I mean, yeah, more Mass Effect. I think I think it's good that they don't have Shepard anymore, mm -hmm. because now they can kind of branch out a little. I'm just worried that they won't. It'll still be, I'm a character and I'm the hero, and now mm -hmm. the Reapers. Now I'm gonna drive my Mako. All right. So like I'm going through the Destructoid article or what they revealed. So yeah, they talked about Mass Mass Effect Andromeda. I I missed that part uh, personally. I was watching some of it. Uh, some of the EA conference, but I, I missed that part. Um, Need for Speed reboot for some reason. They're needing a reboot now. I don't know why. I, it's because of that freaking uh, what's his face. Well, Jesse Pinkman 
was in the Need for Speed movie. Oh, okay, okay, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then now you get the mov- movie eyes it, I guess. Yeah. So uh, the Old Republic, their next expansion, um, it's called Knights of the Fallen Empire. Okay. Uh, this is a, it's promising play like player driven stories. So I guess they're going back to their their Bioware story. Good story, you know, you know, driven stuff. And like the trailer, look, trailer wise, it looked pretty cool. It was two twins, like I guess for a kingdom. And uh, I guess you're going to be either picking either side, stuff like that. But okay. you're, I guess you're working as twins. Like you oh. have a twin brother, basically. Interesting. Uh, Unravel. This is this is the thing I saw, and I, I don't think you saw. It was, I was like, okay, yeah, I guess this is EA's way of taking a chance on a game. Yeah. Unravel looks like a yeah. I said, what was it? I said like an, an Ori plus or Ori cross, like a, I guess Little Big Planet in a way. Oh, interesting. Um, it gave you the feels because you know it's a little uh, yarn uh, figure person. Yeah, uh, you know, going through the stages and stuff, and doing platforming, puzzling, puzzles. So I would, I would suggest taking a look at that trailer because yeah. I was like, oh, that's nice, you know. Yeah. Um, excuse me. Uh, yeah, Plants vs Zombies. Of course, they talked about that. Uh, let's see. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Star Wars: Galaxy of Heroes was announced, and this is for mobile. I don't know if this is going to be like a card game or a MOBA on the mobile, but that's what. They, oh, because they were they were focusing on mobile for a little bit. So that's what they showed, as as well as Minions Paradise, for like the Minions, you know, in like oh uh, sure, yeah, FIFA, Pele was there, more FIFA, Mirror, Mirror's Edge Catalyst was shown, with the release date of February 23, 23rd, twenty sixteen, um, didn't see any any of the video of that of that, but let's see, <laughs> Andrew Wilson, the CEO of EA, is the bad guy in Mirror's Edge. <laughs> What? Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh. And then, like, the final thing that is is listed as uh, in Star Wars Battlefront, you're heading. I guess with this trailer, they were heading to Hoth. So, um, from what I saw, cut pretty solid. I guess there was a little bit of flub flubbing around, but um, you know, I it I, from the overall opinion, audience opinion, people have been saying like this is the war, probably the worst. But not like it wasn't like really bad, but like the worst of the conferences. Yeah, like nothing yeah. truly outrageous. But uh, Big Davia, uh, um, that Unravel presentation was amazing. The presenter was genuinely nervous in the way you only get nervous when you're a bar- uh, like bearing part of your soul. So I need to see it because that's the thing you don't see at E3 anymore is passion for a project that you're working on. Yeah, you know it's all the scripted like oh god. Speaking of the scripted, we're gonna go back to that Microsoft thing, that <laughs> Minecraft deal, that <laughs> woman talking about like yeah. Hey gang, let's I can take see you a look. In the building and like hella, hella, like creeper like oh. <laughs> as he zoomed in. Oh, it's so weird. But uh, it's... but yeah. Anyway, I just went got a bad flashback on that. But uh, <laughs> but yeah. So I mean, genuinely, and like, is that where the first place they showed the Battlefront gameplay? I think I because think so. we and can talk about Battlefront again. for a minute. People yeah. are gonna be butt hurt. Oh, they don't have space battles. Well, they have. They have air fighting. Like, it is EA. They will sell DLC. Yeah, I'm thinking it's going to be expansion. Everything we already know forever, because EA's done it for a decade. Mm-hmm. Why is this the game people are upset about it with? Because it didn't happen in the other games. Well, the other two games, the people that made those games are not a company anymore. Mm-hmm. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, it sounds harsh, but you got to move where business is, and people yeah. buy. Hey, DLC wouldn't work if people didn't buy it, right? You know, no one would have DLC if nobody bought that shit. But yeah. everybody buys that shit. So hey, hey, hate the you know. I guess because it's you know it's Star Wars and don't hate the player, hate the game, man. Oh, yeah. and like Star Wars fans don't buy dumb shit all the time. Yeah, <laughs> I spent forty hundred dollars on an action figure on eBay. Yeah. I'm a, I love Star Wars, man. I'm going to show Star Wars to my daughter. Star Wars was made to sell toys. Yep. That's sure. why it exists. It, that's what it is. It was made to make money. Yep, but yep, yep. The sanctity of the video games. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but the game looks beautiful. That is the one game in my entire life that I looked at. And, like, I looked at the 1080 video that they did and whatever. And I was like, that looks too good. Not that I thought it was fake, but I was like, <laughs> yeah. 
That looks... <laughs> that looks insanely good. The animation on the Stormtroopers looked yeah. real. The explosions and fire looked real, which mm. never happens in video games. It's always the fire. That's the thing you can look at and be like, this is a video game. Yeah. The lighting in that canyon. You can light, like, with the Gears 4 trailer, hell, they shut off the lights. They shut off every light. But, like, it's easy to make stuff look good and real if you can't see it. Mm. But if it, the sun is outside, you see a canyon, you see all this stuff, it looked real. It's creepy how good that game looks. Um... I hope everything's like that. They also showed the, uh, oh, uh, indoor. Um, mm -hmm. Isn't that the forest? Indoor, where uh, uh, the you walk. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, Planet Indoor, they showed the forest. That looks real, and mm -hmm. it looks creepy. Like, that's <laughs> where we're at now. Like, I saw that game, and I was like, this looks real. Yeah. This actually looks real. And I'm a stickler <clears throat> for that type of stuff. And I was like, this is the best looking game I've ever seen. Yeah. It just looks real. Um, which is exciting, and I hope that that wasn't a pre-render thing. I hope that's what it looks like, uh, but here's fingers crossed. Um, but yeah, so EA, I mean, more Mass Effect, awesome. I'm mm -hmm. glad they don't have Shepard anymore. They can actually expand, try new things. If they do the game like Dragon Age Inquisition, mm -hmm. kind of a bigger open area, kind of do side quests, do what you want to do. Um, I mean, Mass Effect's always been slightly like that, but it always feels like you're locked on a pretty linear path as far as exploring but they're bringing the mako back kind of that ship that goes around planets right i hope they uh, they give you something for all this exploration because then i'll be way into it uh, but i like mass effect i mean I, that's a great series all three games mass effect one two and three i enjoyed all for different reasons um looking forward to i mean more mass effect you know yeah yeah I mean, but uh that's really people, it people, from, yeah there's yeah mass effect's huge following and katie's all over that and, right yeah it's like a dream year for them yeah they got they got you're getting fallout and mass effect in the same year right, right. Me? um what is is mass effect coming out 2015 did they announce anything like that uh, let me oh, let me check again uh, i just want to make sure that's the case let me see let me see uh, Reveal Mass Effect Andromeda. Can I click on it? Or did they not even give a release date for it? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know where in part of the the conference Mass Effect was being shown, but holiday twenty sixteen. Oh, holiday. Holiday twenty sixteen. Yeah. Spring twenty seventeen confirmed. No, <laughs> <laughs> that's usually how it works, though. You know. But uh, but yeah, that's EA. Um, yeah. Overall, I mean, it's an EA conference, but I did also hear that EA was kind of the worst of the conferences. Yeah. Not because it was a bad conference, but just because there was there was a nothing else. So let, let's let's take a little retroactive look at what we already established so far. Mm. Bethesda knocked it out of the park. Mm -hmm. Microsoft, the yeah, they set the tone, perfect pace. Yeah. Microsoft did some work. Coasting. Right? They interesting. They talked about the system stuff. They yeah. basically put the ball in Sony's court. Ubisoft surprised the hell out of us with that Ghost Recon reveal, which mm -hmm. blew everyone away. Um, you know, they showed more Rainbow Six, the actual gameplay footage they showed. Just awesome stuff. Um, so then it's Sony. Sony is notorious for dropping the ball in some of the most embarrassing ways you've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Like, do you guys remember Epic Crab Battle? <laughs> that's old uh, school Sony. That's that's PS3 launch before the system $600. comes out. $600. Six hundred five hundred ninety nine 599 US dollars. Um, Second job. <laughs> right. I think that's what they said. Like, if, if you, somebody really wants to get it, they'll get a second job. Like, what? Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. Ex oh, terrible. Don't tell me what to do, Sony. <laughs> How dare you, <laughs> senpai. Um, <laughs> but, okay, so Sony's up. Yeah. They opened the conference with The Last Guardian. How, yeah. They, they opened. I was like... What'd you think at that moment when you, they were just opening with Last Guardian? Like, what did you think at that point? I was at that like, point? the very first thing was I was like, you guys are idiots. <laughs> Why did you do... Nothing else you show is going to get people this excited. Yeah. Which, spoiler alert. <laughs> it did. It, it did. <laughs> uh, it. it did. Then the the next game... Okay, the Last Guardian, of course, we've everybody's been waiting for that game forever. Bird Dog. Um, companionship main theme it looks like they're still trucking on with kind of what their first idea was for it 
which is awesome. Um, 2016 release date. Cool. Yeah. Um, cool. I mean, what a stellar way to get the tone started. Yeah. Then they showed a game that I kind of, I looked at and I was like, is this a game I'm going to buy for my PS4? Called <laughs> Horizon Zero Dawn. Oh, from Guerrilla Games, yeah. From Guerrilla. That shit looked great. You don't see anything other than Hellgas with Guerrilla Games. Did, right. So whenever they're making a game that's not Killzone, that's yeah. what you get. Yeah. Make other games. Like, make, please. Like, Horizon looks great. It looks like, oh, man, I... <laughs> I, w- I was saying, I was saying like uh, Turok, with, with like, it was like adventuring, but like er- all the animals were like you know robotized and all that stuff. And, yeah, and like you yeah. can you can crowd control people. It yeah, looked yeah. like Turok mixed with Monster Hunter. I yeah, mean, yeah. That's kind of the vibe that I got. Yeah. Um, but that looked great. That looked super good. Mm. Um, anything where you have to use a bow and arrow and hit a massive damage spot, I'm on board. Like I don't know what it is about it, but that kind of mechanic. Um, and then we got the Media Molecule deal um, oh, yeah. called Dreams. Just played row, row, row your boat. Yeah, in all these different ways. Cool. Gaming, gaming is art. Yeah, game, games are art. Yeah. By Media Molecule yet again. Um, what cool? <laughs> I just don't know what the game is going to be. I don't know if it's a little big planet where you make everything. Mm. Um, it's cool to give people that creativity. Um, I just don't know. Who's all going to use it? Right. You know what I mean? Right. Um, and then uh, there was Firewatch, uh, the Campo Santo game. Um, mm-hmm. Looked pretty cool. Like, looked interesting. Yeah. Um, you had the walkie-talkie. It has a really good mechanic of you're hearing just one voice. like Kind of like how Bioshock, System Shock type stuff works. All right, you're, right. You're getting narrated. I'm, I'm calling it right now. There's going to be the plot twist that the person on the other line is either an AI or the bad guy. Um, right. you know what I'm saying like that's gonna be it yeah. um, you're gonna do all this stuff for this person come to find out it's not who you thought it was yeah um, then Destiny they showed the DLC the Taken King the Liam Neeson the, the Liam Neeson and uh they showed the bow and arrow they showed a hammer yeah they showed more stuff people more, uh, way into Destiny. Destiny yeah I know Colt and Moneybags were all up in that shit oh yeah for sure they loved it loved yeah. it um, but hey, if you're making Destiny fans happy, that's all you're really supposed to do. Yeah. You know, k- take care of your people. Um, then they showed more Assassin's Creed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, whatever. Um, DLC stuff for Assassin's Exclusive Creed. Exclusive missions, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, the second bomb. <laughs> Final Fantasy VII Remake. This is, is the like, second bomb. Like, they already had Last Guardian. Yeah. I'm like, you idiots, there's nothing you could say. It's going to make people more excited than The Last Guardian. Oh, yeah. what about the Final Fantasy VII remake people have been asking about for a decade? Not bad. Let's um, let's, let's fast forward. Let's like jump jump ahead a little bit. Yeah. Everything that like, it was Square related, they showed a like a troll like game trailer, uh, then the bomb. You know? Square, we're gonna get to that in Square. Uh, yeah. We have Nintendo oh, yeah. next, and then Square. But yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> talk about that. That might have been my favorite conference for that exact reason. Um, but the FF7 remake. Yeah. What else do you say? Um, it's a long time coming. Uh, it's probably going to be worth the wait. They got actually a lot of the people that worked on FF7 back yeah. on it. Yeah. They brought people back. It could be like a dream team situation that we got because all of those people that worked on Seven split and are working on different projects. Right. But now they're all coming back to work on this remake. So the only thing I'm worried about is that they're going to tamper a little bit with the story. They're gonna make Cloud more emo than what he really was. I thought, in terms of the story, I don't know if like you have to. I think more of the gameplay you have to tamper with it to yeah. make it more in the present of either what everybody's used to or what everyone wants yeah. out of like other than like just straight up turn base. Sure, static um, turn base. Yeah, um, may, maybe make it kind of like a Crisis Core type deal. Crisis yeah. Core was a very fun action version of that battle system. I'm, um, yeah. I say leave Materia alone. Yeah. Like, keep it there. Still let us get Knights of the Round. Still let us breed our Chocobo. Mm. Still let us do the silly shit, please. Like, don't make it all dim and grimdark and whatever. Yeah. Make it make it fun. Make it to where it's a full-on remake of the game that we all know and love. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think you're going to be you're gonna be good to go. So um, you, you, you were saying in terms of the story, yeah. they're going to make uh, like Cloud look more emo. Like, what... Can they, what can they tamper with in terms of the story? 
other than like other than what they can't, they shouldn't. What can they tamper with in terms of story? I would say one the writing, mm -hmm. because keep the story beats the same, but now bring out more personality in each character. Because yeah. Eris, God lover, didn't have a personality; mm -hmm. he was just there. Um, Barrett was the only one that actually had personality. Sid <laughs> kind of did. Yeah. Um, and the only reason Barrett did is because he cussed all the time. Right. Right. Exactly. Um, he was being Barrett. Yeah, he, Barrett being Barrett. So, yeah. um, I mean, Vincent was kind of emo. Sephiroth, very emo. Oh, sh the whole, yeah. the whole, that's his whole story. It's like, mommy, why don't you love me? That's the whole <laughs> Sephiroth storyline. Uh, uh, what's the, what's the dog? X? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, X Red, 13? Red 13. Red 13. Red 13. Yeah, Red 13. Yeah. You need to persona, like, more persona, more. Yes. Like, yeah. Because he was a super smart dude. Um, but like the villains are still good. Like you got mm -hmm. Hojo, you got um, oh what's his name? Uh, one of the Turks. You got Reno. Any of those Turks, really? Yeah, any of yeah, any of the Turks. Then you got yeah. the dude with the white coat. Can't remember his name. Rufus. Yeah. Rufus. Rufus. Um, yeah. Shinra. Good idea. I mean, like that game is such a classic because the story's not complicated, mm -hmm. but it can get pretty deep. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, because the whole stuff with Hojo and Lucretia and Vincent. And then Sephiroth being like a love child type stuff. Like, mm -hmm. there's a lot going on. So, don't make it to where we're going to watch a two and a half hour long cutscene of Cloud feeling down in the dumps and then Tiffa being like, there, there, sport. Right. Like, don't do it. Like, you're going to be tempted to, but that's why we have Advent Children. Yeah. Advent Children is that the movie. <laughs> right, um, and I liked Advent Children okay. I did, but I did that's, too. that's one of the things that made Cloud like, why do I exist? Sigh. <laughs> <laughs> for like two hours and i was like man you got to get a grip in the yeah. game he was just insane he was he was he thought he was somebody else legit he thought he had fucking paranoid schizophrenia like yeah. that's what happened um and it was a drug-induced version of it so yeah. it's a pretty dark story but who knows who knows but anyway so then i think that's the megaton i'm like jesus man the not only the last guardian but you got the final fantasy 7 remake yep Oh, wait, who's this guy? Oh, this is the guy that made Shinmu. Come on out here. <laughs> Fucking announces the Shinmu 3 Kickstarter. Before before he even showed up, he tweeted a picture of a forklift, and we were like, what is going on? Why are you doing this? That's genius. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, that's rad. Um, By the way, Shinmu 3 Kickstarter already met its goal. Yeah, like the day after. Two million dollars already met it. And, and Sony, because Sony's like, hey, yeah, they're going to have a Kickstarter. It's up to you guys. They're already, they're, they're going to back it up themselves. Yep. You know? So. Why would, they, why would they have them on a Sony conference if they're not going to back them, you know? Bingo. Yeah. I'm hoping, it said on the Kickstarter that a PC version was coming. And there you go. That's it, man. I, I'm, I'm hoping they bring out one and two for like, you know. Yes. Sony, on the Sony console. Yeah. Even on a PS4. Yeah, I would dig PS4. it. Like. The Shenmue Collection or something, and like yeah. remaster it. Because um, I never played it, and I always hear stories, and you know we compared it to Yakuza, but um, I would love to play a Shenmue. You know, it's good, man. You you would be all about some Shenmue, brother. Yeah, man. It's good, good, good. Um, and uh, so yeah, you got three whammies. You got Last Guardian, you got the Final Fantasy VII remake, and you got Shenmue Three. Mm -hmm. Um, baller. You yeah, know, baller. Um, then um after that, Batman Arkham Knight. They showed the Scarecrow Nightmare Missions. Mm -hmm. So the Scarecrow kind of possessed or took over or poisoned or whatever this uh, this policeman. And mm -hmm. then he was shooting people in He's a cafe. No rushing that, that, no, that oh, diner. Rough. <laughs> yeah. Rough. Um, so then after that, they showed Project Morpheus, which yeah. is their VR. Yeah. <laughs> whatever. Like, we know how good That's that wand thing. thing on the PS4 worked. Yeah. What is it called? I don't even know. PlayStation Move? Yeah, yeah. Who uses like, it? No one. No, so, no, no one really. I just like think it's, it's going to be the... I think that the VR goggles are the same thing as, like, Kinect, PlayStation Move, DDR Revolution dance pads. Like, <laughs> they're going to be very used for their one thing. Um, but, like, there was a place in E3 way back in the day, and not a lot of people know about it. It was called Kinsha Hall. Mm -hmm. Kinsha Hall was where all the bastard sort of, like... Taiko Drum Master. Like, that's where those games were shown. Hell, the first Guitar Hero was shown in Kensha Hall. Kensha Hall was the joke of E3. Mm -hmm. You would go there to see what dumb shit... You wear this controller on your neck! Like, <laughs> it was that type of stuff. The, yeah. uh, some Chinese third-party company. Now we have a power glove for your feet. Like, that was what their goals were. You know, yeah. just to make money on the dumbest shit ever. 
But for me, VR goggles seem like Kencha Hall shit. It seems like 100,000 people will buy it. No one's going to make games for it. The five games for it, fine. But you just do it. You have it that way whenever people come over for a house party and they're drunk. You can put the goggles on. Yeah. That's all I see it as. And I mean, I could be cynical. I could be fickle. I could be eating my words here in five years. I hope so. I hope it becomes a standard. I hope people make stuff for it. I'm just not going to pull the trigger on VR. Yeah, we're, we're at a stage where it's, you know, we're not convinced, but we just got to wait and see what comes out of it, you know? Um, um, like the movie, yeah, Dave, Big Dave says the movie is great. I'm sure it is. Who has it? Like, for real, who owns the move? How many people own the move? That's what I'm saying. Like, what's the install base? How many games are in development just for the move? None. Like, See, not, I mean, maybe like two. There's, there's like, maybe... I can only think of one game concept that a move and connect can work, and that's uh, fighting, fighting games, you know? Yeah. Because you're actually doing the movement. That's true. But, you know, I mean, Sony did have their game. I didn't really know how it went, but I'm guessing it's not great because I don't hear about it now. Yep. And then Connect dropped the ball, and it was like, you know, you could have had that market, mm -hmm. um, but they didn't do anything with it. That could have been locked. It could have you know? been locked down. And they don't, it's waste. It's a waste. So I think everybody trying to do a Me Too thing. Yeah. Because every, everyone made the move, they made the Connect and stuff to try to keep up with the Wii. Mm. Well, now Nintendo moved on from that control system because right. they realized, ah, there's not really a market here. It was fun. A lot of people bought it, but eh, they know. It, it's, it's, then, funny. it's funny because uh, Wolf was just saying, you know, if, they, if only they made like a Sword Art Online, like, dude, that could work too. Yes. You know? Make it to where, yeah, make it to not, like not, an not MMO. The that, not the fact that, you can, you know, you can't leave. but <laughs> <laughs> You got to really kill people. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I agree. Make Make something that you cannot get anywhere else yeah make it worth buying right that's my thoughts on the vr um so like i can imagine playing doom in vr and just vomiting everywhere oh, like how fast that game moves and you're like ah oh, <laughs> jesus <No>. like <laughs> yeah we were saying like yeah imagine playing outlast with, with vr like hell no you know no, never but i will never <laughs> never ever never <laughs> never you know, uh, slender man or something yeah. peace uh, yeah. Uh, Black Ops 3 map pack for us on PS4. Beta access PS4 in August. That's weird. Like, yeah. Black Ops, a COD game, like, just, you know, all, all for the PS, like, PlayStation or Sony. I'm like, what? Because cause COD usually is is on, like, Microsoft, Microsoft's side, because, you know, Microsoft's giving them the, the money. Yeah. Uh, but the fact that they they showed up, like I guess, what what were they saying about uh, uh, Black Ops Three? Basically, yeah, like the map packs, like mm -hmm. those will be released first on PS4, mm -hmm. and then um, PS4 gets beta access first, which means they're gonna bring it out. Because I mean, Call of Duty, what is the over under on it selling on PC versus selling on console? It's like an eighty to twenty ratio. Mm -hmm. Eighty percent of Call of Duty players played on console. Yeah. It's something ridiculous like that. It's like so overwhelmingly console biased now. Mm -hmm. That yeah. so smart move on Sony's part. You know, yeah. hell, we get we're getting random people like hanging in chat for the first time saying Black Ops Three, Black Ops. That's the only game to care about. Yeah. So hey, you know, well played Sony, I guess. Um, but the thing I want to: how many mentions of PlayStation Vita? None. None. They showed it in a little video. Yeah. The so GG Vita owners. Also, also. Because if you passed it, like Street Fighter Five, it was the smallest oh, yeah. like window of trailer out, and that was E three for me was waiting for, to see Street Fighter Five. You know, I saw the smallest trailer, like okay, Birdie and Cammy revealed, like Birdie. I don't know why, why Birdie, but right, I thought that dude. I was like, what? Like, I haven't seen that haircut forever. And then I see more, more, more Birdie. Like, dude, he got fat. Like, he's the fat character <laughs> in that in that he's, in, in Street he's Fighter Five. He's the Rufus. He's the yeah. Rufus. So like, you know. As as a as we you know you're into Street Fighter stuff so like yeah. that's what I'm that's what I'm looking for so like for the fact that so, Sony like just you know just toss yeah. Street Fighter Five there like, like oh man come on give me yeah, give me give a little bit more uh, so so basically you're saying your E3 is Evo yeah that's your E3 kind of yeah kind of I, yeah. yeah I was just more focused on what is Street Fighter Five going to show me because right. you know Mortal Kombat Ten you know came out blew everybody in the, out of the water you know Tekken Tekken Seven you know, it's slowly sh showing up. You know, you know, I'm all about the fighting games. So, like, right. you know, Street Fighter, 
Speaking of them, we'll talk about this after we wrap up all the uh, conference stuff. Sure. Killer Instinct coming to PC. Oh yeah, yeah, that too. You know, big uh, news coming from that PC gamer conference. But yeah. uh, but uh, let's see. So I got I got to make a shout out to Johnny Vignaki. Okay. Hello, Johnny V. <laughs> he was the presenter for Disney Infinity Star Wars. Oh, dude, he! I loved it. I, I loved it. his energy. Killed it. I hey, everyone! Like it was the best phony E3 voice. Nobody cared. I didn't. I didn't care that nobody cared. I loved the fact. That, I loved. Like, I yo, thought it was great. Let's he was go. so ecstatic to be there, yeah. and no one gave a shit. You know, I was like, "You're the man, Johnny V. Like, <laughs> keep that shit going. <laughs> keep that shit going, Vinyaki." Um, but I, I bet he high fived everyone in the back after he got done because he killed it. That was a great presentation yeah. for Disney Infinity for Star Wars hype, tying it all in, and he was like, "What's better than?" Disney Infinity, Disney Infinity Star Wars. Yeah, like, he, <laughs> he hammered it home. And I was like, that's so good. I bet, Holy I bet, shit. I bet at the end, he's like slapped his chest. Like, that's how you do it. <laughs> that's, that's you do it. That's he how did you the do Samoa it. Samoa Joe. Like, he did that Sabu point to the sky after <laughs> yeah, he got done. He did. <laughs> um, oh, oh man. man. Yeah, Rise Against the Empire playset. <laughs> uh, genius move. Disney Infinity makes money. Skylanders makes money. Like, that shit's yeah. falling. Um, so yeah, then Star Wars Battlefront, they showed more of it. Mm. That game looks real. That's the one video game in my whole life. I'm like, someone's really shooting someone out in the woods and they yeah. just filmed this. They shot like, a green laser at it. They it. shot at some great, then the, they built an X-Wing to fly by. Like, yeah. this looks real. I'm, um, I'm kind of waiting for that G.I. Joe. That, that G.I. Joe game with the red lasers and the blue lasers. That's what oh, I'm waiting for. So good, man. <laughs> and then, uh, of course, I ended it with Uncharted 4. Yeah. Um... Kind of, more... they, kind of, they kind of messed up in the beginning, but... Yeah, which was weird, because was somebody playing? I don't think so. <laughs> so how did the video just fucking, like, he didn't move? The guy, either the guy forgot, or he was like... He came, he came from, I don't know. Yeah, he, either, he was, right, was... either they're like, oh, here's a trailer. But then there's that controller that was lit up on the stage. Like, means dude, somebody dude, had to play it. <laughs> And they're like, fucking go out there and play Uncharted. What are you doing? <laughs> He's like, oh, God. He's eating a ham sandwich. <laughs> oh! Yeah, he was. <laughs> Just wacky. It, it was Marvin. I was, I was taking a picture with the booth, babe. But... Yeah. Yeah, so you're going to go play Uncharted, oh, see? Get some I'll be right back, see? <laughs> Big gameplay reveal. Damn it, Marvin. Oh, Marvin, you can't get it going, man. <laughs> um, But yeah, so overall, Sony killed it. Oh, gosh. Not a lot of news on systems or anything. Yeah. But we didn't like didn't even mention Vita, so GG on that. But they mentioned Vu, PlayStation Vu, I don't even know what that is. Or, I guess yeah, it's Vu or Vu or whatever they called it. Which yeah. is like cable without a cable box. I guess. You can pay and watch CNN, you can pay and watch ESPN, you can pay and watch Comedy Central, you can pay and watch so it's like you can do a la carte cable, which I thought cable companies should do a la carte anyway. Yeah. Like I, I can kind of I can kind of actually dig that because I why would I want to pay the cable company where I can pay the gaming system the game the game company what because, I want because I have my if I'm watching TV it's because I'm watching Netflix anyway yeah right so make it to where I can watch you know like Netflix, they're doing that type of stuff with pay per views yeah. yeah they're doing that type of stuff with pay per views like oh you can buy a pay per view directly from the dashboard on Xbox One and PS4. Yeah. Now, let's do pay-per-view on, like, MSNBC. Let's do pay-per-view on... You know what I mean? Like, right. let me get my actual... You know, cable can still have the fix on local channels. But mm -hmm. you can still get those for free anyway if you have just an analog deal. You just... I think you get local channels for emergency purposes for free in North America. I think um, I remember hearing that. They changed it, like, five or six years ago. Um, but, yeah, interesting. It's just Sony's bad thing is they have 36 applications that do the same thing. Right. So we have the Sony Music Player, and now we have Spotify, and you yeah. can link up Pandora, and then PlayStation View, and then the Amazon Music Player. It's like, give me one to play <laughs> yeah. fucking music. I just need one. Just the need, one. I don't need seven. I don't use, I don't listen to that much music. <laughs> yeah. I have one Twitch playlist that we listen to all fucking day. Right. That's it. That's my music. Um, oh, man. just, it, it's just silly. Uh, but yeah, so that's Sony, but Sony killed it. Then we come to Nintendo. Nintendo. Overall, I would say Nintendo had a super solid conference. The Muppets helped. 
genius. That's what I was going to bring up. The Muppets. Oh, my God. Hilarious. As dumb as, as, dumb as that sounds. It they, just, it, it, it's only, yeah. That is pure Nintendo. Yeah. The energy of Muppets and dancing Miyamoto and stuff and, like, <laughs> them turning into Star Fox and, you know. Yeah. Hilarious. I thought the whole bit was <clears throat> that whole gag, the work, unbelievable. Like, it was so good. Work. It was a, such a good work. Such a good work. <laughs> um, yeah, amazing Muppet opening to reveal Star Fox Zero. Um, that's what I put in my notes. Like, yeah. I was like, that whole, the Muppet theme was genius. Um, and then uh, Miyamoto discussed the gameplay styles of multiple screens for Star Fox. Mm -hmm. So on your main display, you have kind of that three-dimensional, um, yeah, that three-dimensional cinematic view for Star yeah. Fox. But then you have Rogue Squadron, like, TIE Fighter, <laughs> cockpit view on your Wii U Oh yeah, tablet on screen. the tablet, right? Genius. Yeah. Like wow, like that. That would be something I would want to buy, because mm -hmm. I love Tie Fighter. I love you know Elite Dangerous, you know X Three, um, Albion Prelude, stuff like that. So mm -hmm. that playing a Star Fox in that mode, while I can also see it pretty, you know, like how big is the boss compared to me, like that type of stuff. Just awesome, awesome use of the dual screens. And then Reggie did this. He teased a project called Project NX. For 2016. Mm -hmm. He just said it in passing. He was like, we have a lot of stuff planned for the future, like Project NX. But enough about that. <laughs> just threw out words. And, and like, wait a minute. Like, okay. So what, okay, Marco, pie in the sky, okay. what do you think Project NX is? I don't know. I really <laughs> don't know. NX, look, that can mean anything. That, can, yeah. that sounds like an F-Zero, for, for all I know. It, it might be, dude. Like, you know? New F Zero, hell, they're doing new Star Fox. They need it. Can you imagine like sixty frames a second Wii U F Zero game? Gosh, no, yeah. I can't. Yeah, everybody's, everybody's gonna throw up. It'll be like it'll be like Wipeout. Like it'll <laughs> just be like Wipeout. It's crazy. <laughs> no, um, but then then they showed. The, I think to me one of the highlights of Nintendo was the behind the scenes thing of uh, Mario Maker. Mm -hmm. Because what they did is they did like what about a ten minute little documentary about how Miyamoto and I can't remember the other guy's name. Oh, someone in chat, please help oh, me. Oh gosh, I forgot, um, yeah. But yeah, they, how the fact that he used like the paper and like one part of it was done, so, like put it over, and so added good. another section to it, and um, yeah, people were saying in chat, NX is the new console. Oh, console, um, that's right. Yeah, okay. so I mean, well, I mean, maybe, um, but yeah, NX it would be about the same time to announce a new console. Okay. Um, yeah, I could see it. I could definitely. That's not a bad guess, for real. Um, but yeah, the, Reggie teased it and all that stuff. Um, but mm. that Mario Maker, that little documentary, and then they even went into like, oh, you guys can make your own levels. So like with World One One, this is how we taught people how to jump without yeah. saying like press A to jump. We showed you to jump between this gap, and then you had yeah, yeah. like the floor there, so that if you miss the jump, you could just try it again. The next one didn't have the floor. Mm -hmm. So you had to master that first jump to make that second jump. And I was like, I never thought about that. <laughs> I never once, yep. I played Mario 1 infinite times, just like everyone else in the world. Never once did I understand that. Like, right. no, or did, I didn't make that connection. That they were teaching you how to play the game with no tutorial, no whatever. You're playing Mario, you're learning by example, you're learning by experience. That's why Miyamoto is still, in my opinion, the greatest video game designer ever, ever that's ever lived, ever. Mm -hmm. Is he gets it? That's where his mind is. He's like, you know, because people talk about Valve. I love Valve. I love Blizzard. I love, you know, um, these indie developers nowadays that are like really getting the swing of things. Miyamoto is the man. Mm -hmm. Like, you're gonna be, you know, I could talk shit on Nintendo. But they got Miyamoto, so yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know what I'm up. saying. Exactly. That's it, man. Like Miyamoto's the guy. He's the guy. Um, so that was my fav personal favorite part of the entire Nintendo conference is mm -hmm. that Mario Maker deal. Um, they put um, Nintendo playable characters in Skylander Superchargers, so they put Bowser. Um, you could do Magma Bowser, and, you know, and Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong, yeah, yeah. So um, they went deep in the lore <laughs> to get their stuff. Um, <laughs> they Soul Calibur, what, for that? Like Heihachi and Soul Calibur? <laughs> right, right. Is that what they um, did? Just crazy, man. And like, so, I mean, Skylanders makes Buku's of money. Exclusive mm -hmm. uh, Skylanders Nintendo characters, genius and move. Amiibos, and, yep. That's um, smart. Yeah, it's very, very smart. 
Um, and then Zelda Triforce Heroes. Yeah. For the 3DS online multiplayer. Whoa. Like, yep. all right, all right. <laughs> it's basically like Four Swords Adventure. That's the vibes I was getting from it. It was like a Four Swords sort of deal. Like, Swanda, uh, like Swanda was here with us the whole Nintendo conference, and she was, mm -hmm. yeah, she was drooling the entire conference. Yeah. Because uh, they were saying all the right things. They were showing good stuff. Um, Zelda, um, what was the one on 3DS? Um, Link Between uh, Worlds. Well, Hy not Hyrule Warriors. Um, but... Like, Link Between Worlds was the spiritual successor to Link to the Past. Triforce Heroes? Yeah, Triforce Heroes was the yeah the three-player co-op. Yeah. Um, and then they also do the 3DS version of Hyrule Warriors is coming mm -hmm. out. Kind of like the Ultimate Edition, I guess, is coming out with all the DLC. And it, they added Wind Waker uh, levels and uh, characters from Wind Waker. Mm -hmm. um, so, but try to, uh, Zelda Triforce uh, Heroes comes out fall 2015. Quarter 1 2016 on the Hyrule Warriors mm -hmm. um, kind of Ultimate Edition. Um, and then... That Metroid Prime four-player co-op missions game. Yeah, yeah. Pretty uh, baller. Let me see. What was it saying? It is called uh, Metroid Prime Federation Force. Federation Force. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Like. Oh, <laughs> Laypix is asking. Uh, anyone else really upset not seeing Final Fantasy 15 at E3? Wait for Tokyo Game Show. Yeah. That's Tokyo all I'm gonna Game say. Wait, or, wait for Tokyo. Tom. Yes, wait Either for Tokyo Game Show, for real. Um, you'll be very happy. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, the Metroid Prime, more people need to play Metroid Prime. I love that freaking game. Um, super genius. Mm -hmm. The Metroid Prime trilogy for the Wii went for like $200 on eBay. <laughs> like, it's, it got it was a really rare game. Um, yeah. But yeah, awesome stuff. They showed Fire Emblem Fates. Apparently, there's going to be two versions of that game. Hey, really? Which I didn't. I was watching uh, Imran Khan from Nitro Beard and Paste Magazine. Uh, he was uh, saying like, "Hey, if you think that Fire Emblem Fates is one game, you're going to be sorely disappointed." Oh. So apparently, it's going to be two games, um, almost like Persona Two did, Eternal Punishment okay. um, or Eternal Sin and um, or Eternal Punishment. I think were the two Persona Two games um, back in the PS One days. Mm -hmm. um, so we might get something like that. I don't know. Um, and then uh, Atlas shows yeah Fire Emblem. Um, or uh, shows FE Project FE. FE. Okay. And then it looks like a kind of a more mm -hmm. jovial version of a Persona style JRPG. Okay. Like they didn't show a lot. It gave me some Catherine vibes. It gave me some Persona vibes. Mm -hmm. You battled. You dungeon crawled. But you were dating boys. You were doing all the like. <laughs> but you're dating. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. It's like that teenage <laughs> Japanese. You know, whatever. I mean, hell, I yeah. love Persona, man. So <laughs> Persona is all about that shit. So. Mm -hmm. Could be cool. Um, coming out 2016, and then oh, dude, Xenoblade Chronicles. You're waiting. You're waiting for this. <gasps> you're, That's you're, the game that will make me buy a Wii U. Yeah, you're like, yeah, you're that close to getting uh, getting a Wii U. Way closer than you might think. Me and Brittany were talking about it last night. I was mm -hmm. like, I still can't justify paying. How much are they? 250 bucks for I think, Wii U. Yeah, right there, 250, 300 bucks. Can't pay that much money for one game. Can't pay that much. Um, can't pay much. There's more money than that, you know what I'm saying? Um, but then, <laughs> Animal Crossing Happy Home Designer coming out September 25th. Yeah. Um, <laughs> weird. Like, they show that once again, Nintendo's doing a little grief, and people are like, oh, is this Animal Crossing for the Wii U? Yes and no. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's Happy Home Designer. Cool mini game stuff. And then there is Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival, which yeah. reminded me of like Mario Party. Yeah, in yeah. a way, but with the Animal Crossing stuff. What's yeah. up, Dragon? Uh, he's saying, "Commie <clears throat> bro, good news." Yes, sir. Um, yeah, we're doing the live power hour, man. Yeah, Talking man. About some, um, so yeah, Swanda says so disappointed with the Animal Crossing stuff. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I just don't know what to say. Like that was Nintendo. Like Square were king griefers this year. <laughs> yeah, they were. Nintendo Jeez. had their fair share. Yeah. Um. But then, Britney's favorite of the whole Nintendo conference, Yoshi's Yarn. Yeah. Looks like Yoshi's Island. That game looks beautiful. They need to start producing those Yoshi Yarn plushies like yesterday. Oh, right. oh yeah, for sure. I'll buy every one of them for my daughter. Every single... She will have a room full of Yarn Yoshis. Um, <laughs> but it has, it has a co-op mode. Um, and I put in all caps, my daughter needs a Yarn Yoshi for real. Like, yeah. in all caps, its own line on my notes. Um... 
Britney, Britney tweeted a, a Yoshi picture. Yes, she did. A <laughs> save funny. Yoshi 2K15 picture. Tra traitorous swine. <laughs> traitorous swine. Oh my god. My girlfriend's the best. Uh, yeah. Let's see. <laughs> sure. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, and the Amiibos link with Yoshi's colors. So if you have the Mario Amiibo, put it on there. He turns into Mario. He has a little mustache on his. Like, <laughs> it's adorable. Just an adorable game. Looks like a good kind of spiritual successor to Yoshi's Island. Yeah. You know, instead of pooping out eggs, you poop out yarn. There you go. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we were playing Yoshi's Island last freaking week. Like, you know, so all of the, even the aiming reticle going up and down and stuff, like very, very cool stuff. Um, then you have Poochie in there that barks at things. Mm -hmm. And so um, let's see, there was um, Yokai Watch from level five. So a level five JRPG for the 3DS. Mm -hmm. um, you use the Yokai lens to find Yokai. So I guess it's like Pokemon Snap sort of. Basically. Where you find monsters and then those monsters battle. Yeah. That'd be cool. Level yeah. five. Love me some level five, man. Level five, yeah. They're, oh. They've been uh, incognito for a little bit. A little bit. You know? So what was I the mean, last big thing they level five well, brought out? Was well, it uh, Nino Kuni? That, or I want to say, like, aren't they like Professor Layton, too? Maybe so. Maybe so. Yeah. Um. Then they showed... Uh, Let's see, they showed Mario & Luigi Paper Jam. Paper Jam, yeah. Um, Mario & Luigi games, like Superstar Saga, awesome. Mm -hmm. The more of those, great. Um, Mario Tennis Ultra Smash coming out holidays 2015. Hey, yep. more uh, more Mario Tennis, cool, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, Wanda said uh, that the Yukai Watch reminded her of that Pokemon mini game they sent out before Pokemon Black & White. Which you use the 3DS camera, and you would look at your actual surroundings, like your so your apartment and stuff. Oh, okay. And you would see Pokemon mm. hiding out. Right. It was pretty cool. It was a pretty okay. cool little deal. That's how you could actually get a Pokedex for that. You would collect mm. your Pokemon that way. Uh, just really, really cool. And then some Pokemon were more likely to show up if certain colors were on screen. So, like, right. certain ones would show up in the grass. Yeah. So you would go look at grass, and you had a higher likelihood. It was pretty neat. It was a pretty neat little deal. Um... And then, uh, let's see, yeah, and then that Miyamoto documentary about making the Mario levels. Mm -hmm. um, the 8-bit amiibo of Mario that yeah. they showed, like the little Minecraft version of Mario yeah. that they put yeah. down. I was like, oh man, I don't even care about amiibos, but I'll buy one of those. Well, you'll grab that one, right? That looks yeah. cool. Um, and then they put out uh, LetSuperMario.com. Um, you make fan-made Mario videos. It's for uh, the Operation Smile charity is where yeah. the proceeds for the advertising and stuff goes. And then, uh, and then yeah, like it's the 30-year anniversary of Mario. Mm -hmm. So... That's crazy. So, like, yeah, it's it's uh, overall Nintendo did some good stuff. They did do the griefing on the Animal Crossing for the Wii U. <laughs> yeah, but overall, man, solid stuff. Yeah, for sure for Nintendo. You know, yeah, that Star Fox, the Mario Maker is gonna be a gold mine for them. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, more. I mean, the Nintendo stuff and Skylanders, uh, the Zelda games. You got Hyrule Warriors coming to 3DS, which I'm excited about because I don't have a Wii U, so I haven't played it yet. Um, but then yeah, Zelda Triforce Heroes like. Just good stuff. Overall, good conference from Nintendo. I like the fact that they don't do it live anymore. Um, it works for them, yeah. Yes, the Nintendo Direct format definitely works for them. Um, so that brings us to Square. Square Enix. Beef and motherfucker. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so this is the last conference we were writing about. Um, we can kind of genuinely talk about what happened at the PC conference, but mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, so Square started with Just Cause 3. I wanted them to show off multiplayer. Odds are very good it'll be in the game. But they're staying hush on it. Yeah. Cause because for Just Cause 2, they not only allowed that mod for multiplayer, um, they they were like pushing it for them like for the guys that made it, you yes. know? It's like, they, yeah, this is great. Like you do more of this. Yes. You know, we'll tell everybody about it. Right. And the fact, yeah, like like you said, the fact that they're keeping quiet, they're probably working with those guys to just Blow see the water. most crazy like just cause three multiplayer out there. Like it's crazy that we what we saw so far, but you know, what would that look like with multiplayer in hand? You know? They're crazy. They they've um, made the parachute more position like more stationary, I guess, mm -hmm. like yeah. better control that way you can shoot while you're doing it. But then they added the wingsuit. Mm -hmm. um, and then you could mix the grappling hook with the wingsuit, and you can just never hit the ground ever again. Yeah. Because you can put that grappling hook on the ground, you can put it right. on cars, you can put it anywhere. 
and then you just skyrocket. You slingshot yourself. But yeah, like December 1st, it's coming out for PC and mm-hmm. Xbox One, PS4. Um, you have unlimited C4. <laughs> That's crazy. You know what I mean? Like 80 vehicles, <laughs> you have a sky suit, um, 400 square mile play area. Crazy. Crazy. Yeah. Um, so then the weird thing happened. <laughs> and they brought out one of the weird things that happened. Dude, my rival showed up. <laughs> your your luchador rival. My luchador rival showed up. Um, Platinum Games are teaming with Square. Uh, with Yosuke Saito, uh, with yeah. the Yoshida art, and Nabo is producing. It's a new Nier game. Yeah. He had like some weird moon mask on. He looked like Majora's Mask. People were saying, like, where's Link? Where's Link? This was pretty <laughs> funny. Um, but like... I saw this. I stood up. I was like, "Who the hell is this guy? This imposter!" I, I should have made a promo, like in my own. You should have cut one. Be like, "Listen here, <laughs> brother." <should've> him. <laughs> um, I'm coming for you, Moon guy. <laughs> coming for you. Um, <laughs> so yeah, New Near. Near is one of those games that very cult classic. Mm-hmm. Like huge following for the people that are into it. I know, like Imran Khan, we mentioned him earlier, um, loved Near. Loved it. Yeah. Said more people needed to buy it. It needed more marketing, which I agree with. I never got a chance to play it. But, like, a crazy. He explained the ending to us on one of the old Beardcast episodes, and we were like, what the fuck is this? Like, mm-hmm. it was pretty profound, pretty crazy. Um, this is very, very cool. Um, and then Rise of the Tomb Raider, they did another gameplay thing where they showed yeah. the uh, grappling, or the, uh, what is it, the ice hook thing? Yeah. Like, swinging back and forth. They said, we're going to be putting the tombs back in Tomb Raider. That's cool. Okay. That's cool. Um, then they did their mobile stuff. Um, the people that did Hitman Go and the Hitman Sniper game are bringing out a Tomb Raider version called Laura Croft Go. Yeah. Um, you know, I heard Hitman Go was really fun. I heard it was kind of, it was a super basic game, but like it was a really gratifying game. Yeah. So hopefully Laura Croft Go will be that way. Um, yeah, so, um, Hashimoto comes out. Big applause. Um, Mm. kind of the guy, you know, one of the guys at Square. He comes out, he discusses the Final Fantasy VII Remake. Um, we'll get more news this winter about it. So, hate to break it to you guys, we're probably not seeing that game until late 2016 or early 2017. Probably, yeah. You know, it's going to be a while. Um, the Final Fantasy VII Classic, they were like, I know it was supposed to be out already, but <laughs> it's not. Yeah, And I'm right. real sorry. But please, it's coming out please in the understand. winter. Uh, please, please understand. Yeah, the bow, the, the <laughs> water bow. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, the classics coming out on the winter for the PS4, and the iOS version is coming out before the end of the summer. Mm-hmm. So the you know, iOS people are getting their final, th- which I thought already they already had it, but maybe I was mistaken. Um, like, <clears throat> yeah, it comes out for winter on PS4. Yeah. Um, but now people, who's going to buy that? Well, maybe there's going to be quite a few people. Hell, I bought the Steam version. You know, so. I'm pretty sure people are going to stream this before, yeah. uh, not before, but like. We'll play it almost before this game, the, the, the remake is going to come out. Just so they can compare and contrast. That's probably yeah. what we'll do, to be honest with you. There, um, there you go. And then then they come out. Producer of Kingdom Hearts walks out on stage. Oh, this guy. He's like, guys, <laughs> have I got something for you? <laughs> Thing is, like, you hear all the people, woo, in the, in the background. That one guy. Yeah. That one that dude. One guy. That one guy. That one dude. Every Saying, mention of Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, Kingdom Hearts! <laughs> Kingdom Hearts X Unchanged for smartphones. Yeah. I laughed <laughs> for a solid five minutes. The people that were here saw me. I got so... They have oh, fucked over okay. Kingdom Hearts fans for so long. <laughs> and I was like, this is a genius. I couldn't have planned a better troll if you gave me five years. Yeah. Like, hilarious. And then you, whenever it went back to the audience, they go like, "Yeah." But that, but that one guy, but that one guy, woo! <laughs> Smartphone, Kingdom of Hearts. He was a, he, he was the guy that wasn't paid for it. That yeah, was, he was, was. He was definitely real, not. That was the, all him. <laughs> he was not the paid clapper. Yeah, he was not the paid that, clapper. You can pay that for that interview. Um, he was like. Hilarious, man. But then he was like, oh, wait, that's not what you guys wanted? How about this? And Joe Kingdom Hearts 3. Mm. So, well done. But, like, how dare you <laughs> fuck with people I that way? I loved it. I loved it. I did, too. I thought it was great. But, like, what balls does Square yeah. have? 
He was like, what's the matter? What's the matter? Oh, this? And then, like, Kingdom Hearts 3 comes on. You know? Uh, but, uh, but yeah, um, I put, the game looks smooth, it looks fast and bright. Um, it's vast. It's yeah. more vast than the yeah. other previous games. And, but Ooh. man, that bullshit dialogue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I uh. know where you were coming from. I was seeing, I was seeing the Disney rise. <laughs> I was like, oh, I bet, what, I bet Wes is like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> what is this? Like, they're How not dare speaking. How you put in my <laughs> um, oh, like, it's ridiculous.